eat organic to get orgasmic. Uh oh, tweet it. <laughs> organic to be orgasmic. That, that's my complaint is they are inhibiting my ability to do my profession as a doctor. You know, we got a budget of like $15. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they got a budget of $23 million. Holistic Voice presents the Food Heals podcast with your hosts, Alison Melody and Susie Hardy. Join the Food Hills Nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to actually start using their $39.99 a month gym membership. If you experience any of these symptoms, Snapchat your trainer immediately. All right. Welcome, Food Heals Nation. Thanks for joining me. I'm Allison Melody. Today, I've got what I'm going to call a throwback doubleheader. So what does that mean, you ask? Well, there are two plant power doctors that Susie and I interviewed back in 2015, whose stories Food Heals Nation listeners loved. And I know we've got a lot of new listeners. Love you guys. And even if you've heard these interviews before, if you are a Food Heals OG, I promise promise you will still learn something new. That's exactly what happened to me when I re-listened to these episodes. First up, we're chatting with America's holistic heart doc, Dr. Joel Kahn, who covered a lot of great topics like nutrition, how to eat to live, not to die, longevity. We covered sex, stress, so much more. And this episode was really fun. It was kind of like more like a night out at the Laugh Factory than an interview with a cardiologist. So it's really fun and funny, and I hope you guys get a good laugh out of it. Then we'll be interviewing Dr. John McDougall. Dr. McDougall is a physician, a speaker, and best-selling author, and he teaches the importance of a whole foods, plant-based, starch-based diet in order to halt, reverse, and heal chronic disease. The sicker you are, the happier I am is one of his mottos because he gets to help make you better. Dr. McDougall and Dr. Khan are really our kind of doctors who are just passionate about health and promoting real solutions to illness, and they thrive on helping people, you know, regain their well-being, and they both believe that plant-based nutrition is the most powerful source of preventative medicine on the planet. And this is going to be a great episode, kind of a prequel to next week's episode where we are interviewing another doctor who promotes a plant powered diet. And he's going to tell us the one diet switch that every woman can make in order to prevent menopause symptoms. That will be with Dr. Neil Barnard, who's been on the show multiple times. He is colleagues with Dr. McDougall and Dr. Khan. All these guys really work together. They're from that forks and knives, forks over knives, excuse me, generation who really are the doctors and cardiologists out there promoting the plant-based lifestyle for healing chronic disease. It's amazing, right? So stay tuned for that next week. Next week is a brand new episode. I just recorded it today. So in one week, that will be at your listening ears, listening fingertips. I don't know what I'm talking about. But first... Swag bags are back! I know. I've done this before. I think I'm so funny. Swag bags are back. Tell a friend. We've got eight amazing swag bags full of my favorite organic plant-powered products. We've got products from Energy Bits, CBD Fountain, Banish Skin Care, Sovereignty, Athletic Greens, Sandland Sleep, Just Thrive Health, Organifi, and more. You're also going to get a copy of Dr. Neil Barnard's book, your body in balance. It's amazing. I've got it right here next to me. Great recipes. And we'll have them on next week so you can learn more about the book. You're going to get a stunning journal designed by my girl, Alana Halden, and a copy of my book, Food Heals. And then there's some other stuff you're going to get. Like you might get a book by Janice McQueen Ward. You might get a book by Tamar Medford. You might get some other supplements that are shipping over that I haven't gotten yet, so I'm not announcing them until I have them in my fingertips and my hands, then I'll announce them. But the swag bag is going to be full of amazing things that you're going to love. So here's how to enter. 
Go to Amazon and leave a review for my book, Food Heals. Screenshot your review and post it to social media using the hashtag Food Heals Swag. Now, a lot of you have reached out and said your accounts are private, so the hashtag isn't showing up. That's okay. Just tag me at Food Heals Nation. Tag me at Allison Melody TV. DM it to me. PM it to me. Email it to me. And make sure I respond that I've seen it. And that way I can know that you have entered. So don't worry about it. And also, if you don't have social media, no big deal. Email your review to info at foodhealsnation.com. Use the subject line, Food Heals Swag, and I'm going to pick eight winners to win one of these beautiful swag bags. So there's a very good chance that you can win. So send me your reviews, and let me tell you how to get three entries, up to three entries. So number one, entry number one is just leave your review. Thank you. That is one entry. Entry number two is if you have purchased the book on Amazon before or you purchase it now, Amazon is going to show your review as verified. So that's a bonus point because those hold more weight in the Amazon world. So that's entry number two is if you have a verified review by purchasing the book. Entry number three is to take a photo of the book in your house or of yourself reading the book and post that to Amazon with your review. And I've seen a couple of you have done that. Thank you so much. It means so much to me. Amazon absolutely loves this. Okay. So help me get my book into the hands of more people, and I'll help you by trying to give you a beautiful swag bag full of my favorite things because Amazon does reward reviews. So the more reviews I have, the more I will show up in the searchability. So send me those reviews. I really appreciate it. You know my goal is just to help people get healthy, inspire people that a healing miracle is always possible. So I would love for you to help me with my goal. There's no purchase necessary. Like I said, you can just do step one and enter the contest. That way, this is valid to U.S. citizens at this time only. All right, Food Heals Nation, I hope you enjoy this interview with first Dr. Khan and then Dr. McDougal. Roll it, Roxy. The Food Heals Podcast starts now. Welcome, Dr. Khan. How are you today? I'm excited to be on your show, and I'm feeling pretty darn rosy. That's awesome. We are so glad to have you. We love having doctors that preach a holistic lifestyle. So tell us, what does a 30-year plant-based cardiologist do day-to-day? Act like he's 15 because they feel so young from all that freedom from toxicity and high antioxidant and phytonutrient levels. But what do I do today? today? (laughs) I have a very active cardiology practice that has evolved to focus solely on prevention and reversal of heart disease using a variety of standard and holistic integrative strategies to reverse heart disease. I write a lot, blog a lot, and then I just opened a very large plant-based restaurant in suburban Detroit, which I'm standing in right now. And it is a passionate project with uh, wife and son, and uh, it's taken a lot of my time, too. So I'm glad I'm plant-powered. Otherwise, I wouldn't have the energy to do all this stuff. Wow. Well, I've never had anyone say they felt like they were 15, so that's quite a feat. (laughs) Everybody says I'm 15. (laughs) That's awesome. (laughs) So what's your restaurant called? Green Space Cafe, an artisanal plant-based restaurant. I think it says in the door, but nice. it's a pretty, it seats about 150, full bar, organic, non-GMO, plant-based, no animal cruelty, a hymns a baby, we're for the people. It's a city called Ferndale, Michigan that is adjacent to Detroit, Michigan, and pretty amazing large place. So we've just been open a week. It's been insanely popular. I hope we say that when you Call me in a year, five, and ten years, too. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to have to come visit next time I'm in the area. And Please. You said it was, I think I read this, it's the largest organic plant-based restaurant in the Midwest. That I'm quite sure of. You know, I don't want to go head-to-head with anybody around the country. I'm not sure. And I'd actually like to say it's one of the top 50 because there were so many. They are popping up everywhere. But I tell you, in our first week, I've had phone calls all over the country. Can That's you awesome. come to Atlanta and put one of your restaurants and I said been hoping four days. My favorite phone call was from John Mackey, CEO of Whole Foods for the world. Yeah. Can you put one in Austin? I said, Mr. Mackey, you are CEO of Whole Foods. <laughs> I'd be happy to have one in Austin. But we are not talking peer to peer here, sort of a David Goliath in terms of resources. Mm-hmm. Go do it. Uh, build it and they will come. It appears to be the case. 
Absolutely. Well, I'm really excited about that. You know, this mission is really stretching to all corners of the U.S. and of the globe. So I'm glad you're one of the pioneers that's really helping that happen. So as a plant-based cardiologist, can you really delve into what that means? Like, what do you prescribe to patients? You prescribe them a plant-based diet for every ailment. Does it depend on the ailment? What does that really mean? Yeah, well, I actually am torn between, uh, you know, and titles or whatever titles are. Am I a plant-based cardiologist or an integrative holistic cardiologist? Because plant-based nutrition is one of the foundations, but it's not the only foundation. And I'm most dogmatic about it where the science is strongest. So in my, I am a heart doctor, so I have patients that have very serious heart disease and they're struggling with not feeling well, and they're struggling with decisions about bypass and angioplasty and stenting. And I give them the full Monty, the full Ornish, the full Esselstyn, the full Barnard, the full <laughs> McDougal. I tell them, you know, 100% diet, no added oil, totally plant-based, according to science, will improve your condition. And I see that. I um, had a wonderful patient today who was struggling with angina pain that horrible constricting feeling that is pretty uncommon nowadays because we have so many medications and other treatments and it's just melty. He doesn't have it anymore. And I said, you know, we didn't change medicines. I didn't add any vitamins last few visits. He goes, I'm eating different. I'm finally doing what you've been telling me for years. And uh, it's extremely effective. So that's, that's a small slice of the pie. I tell everybody else the medical advantages, the potential to control your weight, your blood pressure, your cholesterol improve or at least maintain your sexual powers and potency, anti-aging properties that have been demonstrated with a clean, whole food, plant-based diet. It's, you know, 100%, 98, 99% of the way on the spectrum. You know, and some get it, some don't. They watch Forks Over Knives or Plant Pure Nation or, you know, read books that I have in my office and loan them. And, uh, you know, if they don't have that extreme a case of cardiac disease, we also talk about the environment. We talk about animal rights, ahimsa, you know, the need to protect the planet for future generations and pretty powerful stuff. But then that's just one part of the prescription because I'm talking about sleep and sex and joy and socialization and vitamins and supplements and infrared sauna and uh, chelation and uh, vitamin C and I got a whole package that we offer them because heart disease is a bad deal, but it's a very hopeful disease nowadays. I, uh, I really believe we can prevent it and reverse it so that future generations don't have to have coronary care units and cath labs and hospitals. We shouldn't have hospitals. We should turn them into urban farms or something. Absolutely. I love everything you just said. There's so much I want to ask you. I don't even know where to go next, but if, you know, I feel like there's not many doctors, medically trained doctors out there that are doing the amazing things that you're doing and really prescribing uh, this type of diet and nutrition and lifestyle changes. Why are you different? What inspired it, this? Well, I, the good news is it is growing. Yeah. Um, it's not growing fast enough because it's not routinely in the medical schools. It's not routinely in training programs. There are great examples where it is. There's examples of doctors and other health professionals taking cooking classes and nutrition classes, but it's still a small percentage. And we struggle with that here in my city of Detroit and the couple of medical schools we have around here. You know, uh, why was I attracted? Uh, just a couple funny stories. I walked into undergraduate, walked into the cafeteria with my girlfriend who's been my wife of uh, more than three decades and said, oh, disgusting. We're eating at the salad bar. And she agreed. That's, that was our first step. Mm -hmm. And second step was reading John Robbins' Diet for New America, which I had never really considered the full implications of environment, animal rights. This is a book that was very popular in the 80s and even health issues. There weren't many papers at the time on the health aspects of adopting a vegetarian, vegan diet. And then uh, the last little piece, I did some really advanced training in angioplasty, stenting, how to unblock arteries. And I started my first job July 1, 1990 in Ann Arbor, Michigan came with credentials. I was going to change the world. The first three weeks of my practice, I was busier than I could ever imagine. Yeah. And I, picked, I was sitting on my couch at home and I picked up a journal and there was an article by some young dude named Dr. Dean Ornish who claimed he could reverse heart blockage by having you eat Brussels sprouts and salad and meditate and right. say om and do kinds of weird stuff. And mm -hmm. uh, I read that damn thing five, ten times. I knew who I never heard of him before. I knew who his co-authors were and where the universities were that he was doing research out of. And I said, dang, you know, I just spent 
seven years learning how to do this mechanically. And this guy has learned how to change your body into a healing, not a hurting kind of machine. And I need to learn how to do both. So that really kicked me off to say, you know, there's no reason to throw away what I've been learning. It's good stuff. Yeah. But maybe, maybe after they need their urgent care, they may be able to actually, you know, live a better life and just started teaching right from really the third week of my training uh, or really practice that uh, we could combine the best of modern medicine with prevention and uh, really improve outcome. And I just saw people flourish. So I just said, I'm going to just keep up with this. And yeah, you take some heat. My associates thought it was crazy to talk about nutrition, crazy to eat on a healthier side myself, where they were chowing down on burgers and fries and mm -hmm fried macaroni and cheese but you know the pendulum swing and they still eat that stuff but they know it's wrong they just <laughs> can't break their heads right. uh, well the cosmo cafeteria keeps serving it you know this is 26 years later so we haven't made much ground with the uh, hospital administration if they make money they sell it and right. uh, if it hurts people they take care of them and make money on that too so it's a win-win for them but it's morally irresponsible Absolutely. I could not agree more. So Dr. Khan, what is your diet like day to day? What are you eating? What are your, what are your children, your family eating? Things like that. Well, I certainly have no class one carcinogens in my breakfast. And mm -hmm. I'm referring to the new World, Heart, World Health Organization declaration that right. bacon, salami, bologna, beef jerky and such are on the equivalent uh, risk to people for cancer is smoking. But uh, that's you know, been a 35-year plant-based uh, lifestyle. Um, usually morning is one of a couple of things. There might be chia pudding in the refrigerator. It's kind of the new last few years. Might be a uh, overnight muesli oatmeal with hemp milk, soy milk, oat milk, rice milk, you know, the walnuts, cacao nibs, goji berries, but it's quick stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe made it a couple of days before it's been sitting around. Quick smoothies always a go-to. Uh, fresh blueberries, frozen blueberries, my Nutribullets, my f always a couple big keeping tablespoons of flaxseed every morning. Unbelievable for prostates, unbelievable for boob health. If I can say boob, can I say boob? <laughs> can, you, can you say that Amazing again? Amazing <laughs> for those glandular <laughs> tissues. A uh, couple tablespoons of flaxseed a day can provide all the omega-3 precursor alpha linoleic acid that you need. A couple tablespoons of ground flaxseed a day can lower your blood pressure 10 points as much as your prescription med that helps lower your blood pressure wow. fiber source. So anyways, always, always ground flax. Just get it done in the morning. Okay, so how right. many teaspoons for the boobs? <laughs> two, two, one for each boob, one tablespoon for each boob. <laughs> Perfect. Um, you know, okay. Two tablespoons per prostate, uh, you know, two tablespoons a day. That's a okay. calculation by some august physicians at the Institute of Medicine and such that, that will provide adequate precursor to omega-3 EPA, DHA for clean eaters. If you don't want to go to fish and other sources of omega-3, walnuts, you know, uh, another great source, chia, hemp. You know, I'll, I may put green powders in my smoothie. I'm not a huge fan of protein powders. I mean, they're going to be pea or brown rice uh, there may be some, but I, I don't know, pack them in. Maybe some maca, maybe some, you know, uh, adaptogens to get through the day. And, you know, that'll just zip on up real quick. I like beetroot, spinach. I may put black beans in a smoothie. You can't taste it with enough blueberries. Great way to get a little extra fiber, hmm, never a little extra bean. Yeah, black beans in a smoothie are like putting black beans in a brownie. I mean, you know, that's pretty popular and you really don't taste them and they really do add some nice fiber and consistency. I also make my smoothies, I call them chewies. Mm -hmm. It's like three seconds of circulating. I want them crunchy. There's you know, this great debate, which is really not debate, juicing, smoothie, what's better. You know, One of the subtle arguments for not doing smoothies is when you drink down you know, wonderful things like green vegetables and blueberries, there may be little time to interact with your tongue. And there actually can be some good things that happen when you have nitrate-rich foods like spinach and kale and arugula that you might choose to put in a smoothie. If they have time to hang around your tongue, you may create some good heart-friendly chemicals called nitric oxide. So I, chewing and a little mouth time is probably better to kind of slow down and be mindful and uh, age your nutrition, but it also may age your cardiovascular health. So I make the, you know, they don't always have to taste perfect. I'm not a real connoisseur in my morning. So anyways, I'm on my way. 
try not to snack. I might snack during the day and a little handful of nuts like everybody, but not much. Mm-hmm. Uh, lunch, I always bring lunch, and I bring lunch in glass cases. I don't do plastic anymore. I don't microwave in plastic. I don't drink in plastic anymore. That's um, good to know. We don't either, but can you tell us why? Yeah, sure. I mean, the field of you know EDCs, endocrine disrupting chemicals, the fact that we touch thermal paper at the coffee shop, the fact that we are drinking out of plastic bottles, and uh, the fact that our hand soap says triclosan 5% on the back. All these things are chemicals that get absorbed through our skin or we drink them, and they are circulating through our bloodstream. We can measure them all in our urine. You can measure them in newborn infants, and they have 200 chemicals in their uh, cord blood. Most adults have 500 industrial chemicals we're talking about, and they shouldn't be there. And uh, you know, it's been maybe controversial that these are bad for your health, good for your health, but the pendulum is clearly swinging. They are bad for your health. Right. The uh, medical community is slowly addressing the fact that these are a detriment to our thyroid, to our sex hormones, fertility. So being very mindful of avoiding plastics, cooking in plastics, carrying water and juice around in plastics, and just not doing it. So I'm, I'm a glass guy. We're all good here in Detroit. Everything's good. <laughs> drinking some, uh, some good green tea, and maybe I didn't do my matcha quite thin enough. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I have a little display in my medical office of glass containers, just an example for patients. You know, it really matters nowadays. You know, and lunch will be anything that was in the fridge. It could be homemade black bean burgers, lentil burgers, salad, a lot of kimchi, a lot of fermented stuff. I'm not real picky. Dinner and I own a restaurant, so I've been eating in my place, but um, it previously was casseroles and soups and lentil brown rice. And, you know, it's whole food, plant-based. A lot of spices. I mean, spices, spices, spices. I mean, I am a curry powder freak and a turmeric freak and garam masala. I probably just offended everybody of uh, Indian origin when I say that, but another <laughs> very classic Indian spice. You know, cloves, you know, if it's oatmeal, it's going to have cloves and allspice. Why? Because they are dried plants. They have a tremendous ability to have antioxidants, phytonutrients, um, some of the most antioxidant-rich foods on the planet are putting in allspice and cloves and sage on your soups and uh, ginger, anywhere you can put in ginger. So a little, little square of dark chocolate pretty much every day, a little inch by inch, you know, maybe a couple of them, you know, high cacao. What about wine? good for artery health. <laughs> uh, <laughs> one of, you know, one of the joys of, you know, sacrificing a few things to benefit in terms of health and vitality. You don't have to sacrifice your dark chocolate even for a moment i will never sacrifice my dark, dark chocolate so that's good to know and um Susie asked what about wine i try and stay positive and i don't whine a lot but <laughs> i do drink it but i do drink it yeah but i'm um, <laughs> the cardiovascular data i've written articles about this is consistently a little booze through your life extends your life reduces your risk of heart attacks now we have to recognize the one there's addictive problems there's liver problems. We're not talking about people that shouldn't and can't uh, drink. Um, we also know it may increase your cancer risk a little bit, but mm-hmm. since cardiovascular disease like heart attacks is such a big elephant in the room still that the overall net benefit to people is guilt-free and it's supposed to be a gla- uh, you know one drink for a woman, two drinks for a guy based on differences in their ability to metabolize alcohol, not on any kind of social norm. Um, don't have to do it every day. You certainly don't want to exceed that. Um, but it, you know, it's a, it's a pretty darn good habit in terms of reducing the risk of heart attacks and such. Absolutely. And I noticed that in your description, you have no meat or dairy items. And I just wonder, do people ask you the question that I always get, which is where do you get your protein and how do you respond? I ask them, where do they get their saturated fat? (laughs) (laughs) I try and be kind. You know, I in my own life don't calculate anything. I've been doing this for three decades. I've never read any convincing literature about protein deficiencies. And, you know, we can quote how much protein is in green vegetables and nuts and seeds and all the rest. I I don't think you need to uh, be concerned. I don't see patients that I've been caring for for over a quarter century having protein deficiencies, I have them, I see them having sugar, salt, and uh, added fat excesses and suffering horribly from it. So 
if they will substitute whole foods for almost anything else, they'll benefit. And I just don't calculate it. So um, there is actually a cafe in, um, near Simi Valley that Rich Roll, the famous, yep. wonderful athlete owns part of. And that's the T-shirt the servers wear is, you know, ask me, uh, ask me where I get my protein. I'll ask you where to get your cholesterol. So Excellent. I, I, love I it. copied that right from Joy Whaley. Hey, Joy, if she's listening. <laughs> that's great it's called, it's called joy's cafes that's awesome we're gonna have rich on the show in a couple of weeks as well you can tell him i plugged his cafe big time as well as the plant power way <laughs> i totally right, will book book. yes the plant yeah. power way love that book okay so i know that you're basically saying that you don't eat meat because of nutritional reasons but i know you're a big animal activist right. can you tell us about that well i'll say this because i extend friendship and the olive branch and often podcasts and stages with my dear friends in the paleo movement and i recognize they're talking about a better diet than the average american diet mm -hmm. and if somebody isn't ready to adopt what i'm doing but they'll join dave asprey or they'll join jack wilson a cardiologist or they'll join kelly and petrucci the queen of bone broth because they are jj virgin i mean they're all preaching cut down or, or Mark Hyman, for that matter, a wonderful physician. I mean, they're all preaching cut down on processed foods and reduce added sugars and, you know, eliminate trans fats. And, you know, we, we have commonality in trying to improve the health of America. You know, we, we, there are differences that need to be recognized. But unfortunately, I don't think no matter what we do, everybody's coming over to the green side completely. So any message of improving the quality of the food chain and uh, access to better whole foods and uh, a plate that includes at least some brightly colored fruits and veggies, which I think everybody agrees upon, is to me an improvement. So I've taken a little heat from some people, you know, why do you take a picture and post it with Dave Asprey, Bulletproof Coffee, who loves to put butter and coconut oil in his coffee and is teaching the whole world to do that mm -hmm. because it's it's basically available everywhere now I, I don't think that's good for heart patients i would not have my heart patients do it but you know his diet plan i'm not, not pointing him out but you know many others like that are still far superior and i can't negate the fact that there are people that claim tremendous health advantages and reversal of disease i don't think there's reversal of heart disease i am absolutely standing true to the fact if you're a heart patient you have to be very careful about what's on your plate and i would not follow those kind of nouveau patterns uh, i'd follow the proven science which is exclusively you know uh, 99 to 100 percent plant-based you know low oil maybe with some whole nuts but that's about it but for the rest of america i mean i think there's room to discuss it so uh you know, but the other two parts of it, talking about the environment and talking about animal rights, there really isn't a discussion. I mean, there's nothing kind about grass-fed beef. Right. It's the slaughtering an animal and soiling the world. I mean, there's nothing great about free-range chickens. They're still, you know, meeting an end that they'd probably not vote for. And uh, their feces and their blood and everything else is still being splattered all over the waterways of the world and ending up you know, as a environmental concern of huge proportions. So, you know, I, I stand with the United Nations that said we have to move towards a larger vegetarian component of our diet for the environment. And, you know, everybody in the food world agrees that that CAFO kind of drive foods are horrible and awful and ruining the world with antibiotics. But yet that's 95 plus percent of all of the meats eaten. And I don't think the public gets when some of my friends in the you know, paleo uh, meat centric world talk about the health benefits of the their plate and the caveman diet mm -hmm. that we're not talking about going to Costco and Walmart and buying your food generally. Um, we're talking about, you know, extremely, uh, I don't want to say elitist, but a very small segment of the food market that satisfies those criteria. It's still cruel to the animal. So, you know, I, I feel very happy that the plate diet, I choose to eat from is, uh, you know, the most ahimsa like uh, to the world, to the planet and to your health. So it's, it's a no brainer for me to pick this diet. Plus, I feel good on it. So, you know, end of story. Yeah, I could not agree more with you. I've heard you say the word ahimsa for a few a few different times. Can you tell our listeners what that means? You know, well, you know, I'm a I practice yoga. I'm not an instructor. 
when the first time they played Gurish singing Loka Samasta Sukina Bavantu, I had no clue what anybody was saying. Right, but, right. I've you know, been in that situation. I, I truly, and it wasn't that long ago. I, every, I'm swaying, you know, humming, feeling very awkward. But it's the idea that everybody should be perform, you know, be born free and um, and enjoy their life, and you know that includes the animals on the planet. I mean, um, and it's a very noble goal, and we've had you know decades, centuries, and millennium of enormous cruelty, but doesn't mean we can't strive to reach a higher level of sensitivity and mindfulness in our own life. It may not change everything happening everywhere, but God knows we have a world where there is so much cruelty. Uh, how wonderful it would be if, you know, even our own small microcosm of life was an expression of, you know, more kindness and more sensitivity and, uh, and, you know, it may it just speak up from that perspective. So, uh, I vote for kindness with my fork every meal and, uh, more people that do it, the better. Vote for kindness with your fork every meal. Tweet it, Food Heals Nation. That is so beautifully stated. Hashtag kindness with your fork. <laughs> Love Hashtag it. Hashtag ahimsa with your plate. Yeah, it's true, though. It's so true. I think that's a perfect place to take a break. Next up, we're going to hear Dr. Khan's tips for nutrition, longevity, sex, stress, and how not to die. <laughs> we'll be Woo! right back. Food Heals Nation, I love working out outside, like a good run or swimming, but the thing is, it's way too hot. So unless I'm up at like 5.30 a.m., it is too hot to be outside here in Florida where I'm at right now. And that's okay, but working out inside, I need a little extra motivation, okay? That's why I'm so excited to share sovereignty with you today. And stay tuned to the end because there will be a discount code. As you know, I always give you the best discount codes. So sovereignty creates these game-changing supplements to really help you with your workouts and take your workouts to the next level. I always need a boost. I always need a little extra energy, a little extra motivation, right? And then It lasts throughout your day, so it can help with your endless to-do list, make them feel like a cakewalk, and it's also helpful to help you fall asleep. I don't know about you, but sometimes I do feel unmotivated or I'm lacking focus, and so I love pick-me-ups like this. I love anything natural that I can put into my body to enhance my already vibrant being, right? So have the best day every day with Purpose Plus. So Purpose Plus is their blend of CBD and CBG. So CBG is a mood-enhancing hemp-derived ingredient, okay? Then they've got seven clinically studied ingredients with the world's best adaptogens to deliver results that you can feel almost immediately. And this supplement empowers and supports your mind and body to feel better, be better, and achieve new levels of productivity. So that's the motivation part. That's what I'm doing before the workout or before I have to work. Then if you can't sleep or you're having trouble falling asleep or your mind is just going blah, 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 to-do list, everything I have to do the next day, you can try the Dream Plus. The Dream Plus relaxes and calms the mind and body. You can also listen to a meditation by my girl, Katie Kremitzos. Or you can listen to a meditation by my other girl, Marissa Iman. These are the two that I listen to every night. They're also friends of mine and they're incredible. All right, so when you're trying to sleep, listen to your meditations and try the Dream Plus, which relaxes and calms the mind and body while helping you fall asleep and stay asleep longer. It's also got that CBD and the CBN with those adaptogens to help heal your body from the inside out. Now, I do have a coupon code for you. It's Food Heals to get 20% off your first purchase. That's at Sovereignty.co. And if you're not happy with your results, don't worry. They offer a money-back guarantee on your first purchase within 30 days. If you're not happy, you can send it back for a full refund. Use the coupon code at Sovereignty.co. Food Heals, you'll get 20% off your purchase. And Food Heals Nation, as you know, if you follow my adventures on Instagram, I just got back from Nashville, had to put the wardrobe together, had to put myself together because I was at a conference and I had to dress like it, right? We haven't had a lot of these in the past year and a half due to, you know, unforeseen circumstances that we don't have to name. But essentially, 
I had to look pretty cute, right? I was on stage speaking at Podcast Movement. I was going to meetings. I was going to dinners. I was going to parties. I had to look cute. Um, I don't have all the clothes I used to have when I lived in LA, but I am now getting some really high-end, high-quality clothing from my friends at Faherty, F-A-H-E-R-T-Y. You know, it's summer. We want to look cute. We want to feel good. And their clothes are well-made and timeless, right? So not only did I get to order some clothing for this promotion and take it with me to Nashville, but then I I think I told you last time that I discovered that Faraday is in my neighborhood in Rosemary Beach. There is a physical store. So I walked in there and I got to see all of the beautiful clothes that they show online. And you guys don't understand the quality of this stuff is unparalleled. It's unmatched. It is so nice. It is like, you can just look at the stitching, the thickness of the fabrics. It's just really well-made clothing. And that's why they have their lifetime guarantee of quality. So whatever you get at Faraday, they will replace or fix your clothes forever, no matter what. So Food Heals listeners, of course, you know, I scored you a discount code. Faraday is giving Food Heals listeners 20% off your order at checkout. So go to FaritayBrand.com, and if you want to see the clothing in person, you're welcome to come visit me in gorgeous Rosemary Beach. Um, but if not, just go to FaritayBrand.com, use the coupon code FOODHEALS, you'll get 20% off your summer wardrobe. All right, Food Heals Nation, we're back with America's holistic heart doc, Dr. Joel Kahn, who has published one of Amazon's number one top-selling books, The Whole Heart Solution. And his second book, Dead Execs Don't Get Bonuses, was published in 2015. You can also find many of Dr. Khan's medical views on The Huffington Post and Mind Body Green. He is currently opening the largest organic plant-based restaurant in the Midwest. All right, Dr. Khan, tell us some of your tips for longevity and sex and stress and basically how not to die. Wonderful. And these are pretty important things. So let's start with longevity. Um, Number one, don't die in the next 10 years and (laughs) and take very good care of your body because the field is amazing. And there is so much effort right now, serious money, big time science going into the idea that we will be able to have healthy lifespans 30 to 40 years longer than now, which means more than 100 years um, with technology that is not far away. So if you'll be healthy and don't ruin those hips and knees and burn out your liver and you know take good care of yourself, you'll see that we're on the verge of major changes with companies like Human Longevity Inc. So that's a general concept. Specifically, um, fasting, a calorie restriction. Uh, Okinawa, one of the longest lived sites in the world until... KFC came in and has ruined that place completely and mm. other institutions uh, has a statement that many know, Hari Hachi Boo, eat to your 80% full. There's clearly animal data and human data that um, trying to restrict your calories, it's the opposite of the Cheesecake Factory approach to life. Um, you know, and be mindful of your eating, be mindful of your chewing and stop before you're completely gorged. Um, will result in on average, fewer calories per day, one of the most powerful things you can do to extend your lifespan and health span, health span indicating not just living longer, but living longer in good health. There's a very interesting book out there called The Fast Diet, F-A-S-T, that says one to two days a week, don't fast completely, but drop your calories in a controlled manner. And um, it's based on scientific studies out of uh, University of South, Car- South California. And it's one that I teach my patients as an option. If you have the discipline to do five to 600 calories a day, one or two days a week, if you're struggling with, uh, and you can do whatever you want that's healthy the other five to six days, if you're struggling with weight or prediabetes or blood pressure, it may be very effective and associated with extending your life. So that's what I'd say about longevity. Yeah, I just saw a documentary about that very thing, about uh, calorie restriction, and they did, uh, I think it was at USC. Was it USC that did that study? Yes, yes. There's a wonderful professor there um, with an Austrian name I'm blanking on that – uh, it's not Gunnar Lovelace, but uh, <laughs> sounds like it. That's uh, doing great stuff. You know, uh, so that's in terms of longevity. There's many other things that can be done there, but uh, calorie restriction. Number two, I think we talked about sexuality, which, you know, it's understanding that there's 50,000 miles of arteries in our body. Um, and inside each artery is aligning one cell 
layer thin called your endothelium. It's like wallpaper. And if you took it out of all those arteries and stretched it out, it'd be six tennis courts of this, you know, thin pink layer. It's an amazing thing to think about if you could pull it all out. And it's this living dynamic organ and it's inside sexual organs. And it makes this wonderful chemical gas called nitric oxide, NO. And the more NO you have, the more yes to your life you'll have. Um, and there's a lifestyle. So when the pharmaceutical industry learned of this science, which was in the late 80s and won a Nobel Prize, pharmaceutical industry is going to say, let's make a drug that makes more nitric oxide so we can make billions of dollars. And they were successful. That's called Viagra, mm -hmm. followed by Levitra and Cialis. But there's a lifestyle to enhance your sexuality. And right now, beets, beet juicing, beet powder is very hot. Well, that enhances nitric oxide, arugula, pine nuts. Uh, you know, basically a clean life that's whole, food, plant-based, strong. Watermelon is extremely powerful with a uh, uh, product called arginine and citrulline. Well, citrulline makes arginine. So, you know, cleaning up your diet, this has been scientifically shown, the getting rid of the excess sugar, excess oils, um, trans fats, exercising, getting adequate sleep, managing stress, enhance your sexuality. Plus, you're going to smell better. And if you don't mind me saying, you're going to taste better. If you're <laughs> tasting sex, you're going to taste better if you uh, get rid of the chemicals that the food industry decides uh, should be in our food stream, but shouldn't be. So eat organic to get orgasmic. Uh-oh, tweet it. <laughs> organic to be orgasmic. Uh, <laughs> I it's like that. Very, very powerful stuff. Because uh, we talked again about endocrine disrupting chemicals, getting rid of the plastics and being careful, changing your hand soaps, your facial products, your water stream supply to things that are uh, lower on the chemical chain would be much beneficial to your sexual enjoyment and enhancement. <laughs> Talk about longevity. Give me another topic. I mean, you just gave us so much. I mean, my mind is blown right now with the nitrous, what was it? Nitrous oxide? Nitric. No, nitric. Oxide. Nitric. Nit nitric oxide. Nitric oxide. I'm like, oh, I think that's what goes in balloons. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's, what else that's did the yeah, you said no. We were talking longevity, sexuality. You had another topic, uh, tips. How um, not to die. Oh, how not to <laughs> Allison die. has that down. How uh, not to die. Do you have a? In all fairness, because you know we all can lift things from other great authors. That is the name of a book being released uh, in early December by Dr. Michael Grieger of NutritionFacts.org, and he goes through. And if I was able to read a pre copy, and he goes through why plant based nutrition lowers your risk of heart disease, cancer, lung disease, brain disease, diabetes, obesity, on and on. But how do, you know, how do you not die prematurely from medical illnesses? And, you know, the biggest causes of chronic disease, the heart disease, the cancer, the diabetes, the obesity, the Alzheimer's, chronic kidney disease, all of them have a basis uh, in nutrition. Um, and uh, everything we've talked about uh, is there. So if you want to avoid a heart attack, you know, one of the number one killers in America. There's six tips to drop your risk of heart attack by 90% based on scientific studies and tens of thousands of people. Number one, don't smoke. Shocker, don't smoke. <laughs> Shocker. Drops it a lot. Number two, walk 30 to 40 minutes a day or at least move that body some. If you want to do more, do more, but that's critically important. Number three, keep your waist thin. Kind of goes with the calorie restriction topic. The science says, and this is for the public, not for the elite, under 40 inches for the waist of a man, under 35 inches for the waist of a woman in America. Those uh, limits are actually a little bit tighter in Asian populations where they tend to be smaller, not hard goals. Number four, get seven hours of sleep at night. That's actually been showing up on the radar screen in science as a goal as opposed to four to five hours at night, which so many people do. You want to prevent a heart attack and live long, let your body rejuvenate at night. Let it rebuild all those components that you burn up during the day from working and stressing and sitting in front of Wi-Fi and EMF and everything else. Number five, we've talked about already, have a little alcohol. When you look <laughs> at big studies of preventing heart attack, a little alcohol, even on a daily basis, is associated with freedom from heart attack and is associated with greater longevity. And number six is the one we all suck at, which is getting five or more servings of fruits and vegetables a day. Yep. And uh, those that do those six things have an 85 to 90 percent lower risk of heart attacks and diabetes, adult diabetes, than those that do none of those six things. The sad component is when you look at 
these big data sets, maybe 2% of a population does six simple things that cost almost no money for a society, but yet can reduce healthcare costs, you know, dramatically. So who teaches that? Where do you see that in a hospital? Where do you see it in a, you know, in a waiting room, in a doctor's office? But it's simple. And, uh, it's in some uh, a message I repeat over and over in that second book I wrote called Dead Execs Don't Get Bonuses because, you know, you don't want to go through your work career and like so many of my patients, you know, two months later or two years later, come down with some calamity that uh, affects your life. So, you know, take very good care of that magic organ you have. Uh, and I'm not talking just the guys. I'm not talking about your magic organ, you guys. I'm talking about the whole body. <laughs> but if you tell you know, I actually, I, I have this thing. I teach my guys. The, L-Y-D-D. And I'm again, I know we're on, I call it the like your dick diet. If you'll <laughs> think about that little artery and that endothelium and then a nitric oxide that feeds your penis and you realize that healthy food and avoiding chemicals and regular exercise and good sleep and not smoking all are L-Y-D-D kind of lifestyle, it also will benefit every other of the 50,000 miles of your arteries. But if you'll just focus uh, you know, on that alone, because you sure don't want to lose. I, I just can't believe how many of my patients I talk to, and they cannot perform anymore in their early 50s. And, you know, it's it was it, it comes about from having made a few decades of bad choices. It was fun at the time, but, you know, uh, when somebody's in that situation, would you probably have skipped the donut and had the chia pudding or the raw oatmeal if you knew that you were going to end up impotent in your early 50s and probably not much recourse, although it can improve if you'll make some dramatic lifestyle changes. All right. I'm going to have to get Susie and I's husband to listen to this episode. The L Y D D. Got it. L Y D D. Dr. Khan, have you ever done stand up? Because you're really funny. <laughs> Thank you very much. No, it's, it's, it's on my bucket list. Of yeah. Things to do, but <laughs> Thank you. That would be a great YouTube video just to do funny health jokes because you would get people interested in health while making them laugh i uh, well it's uh, i agree totally i think it's a a great way to approach many issues there are obviously some really serious issues you don't want to introduce humor but for the majority of it um yeah i just gave we had an epic moment in detroit just a couple of days ago because the largest medical school in america is in detroit wayne state university school of medicine i'm a full professor there my obligation is to teach and teach science and we've been kind of advocating let me have an hour to teach some plant-based nutrition to the medical students just so they're aware that there's a body of science there i mean i'm going to stick to the science i'm not going to you know talk about colonics or something i can't really you know find a big study on and it was a big controversy we came up with the idea it has to be a debate somebody else has to present the other side or point out the weaknesses i mean what are they going to do so it turned out it was a very friendly debate you know and all they pointed out was completely plant-based diets you might have to take some b12 you might have you know be concerned about your vitamin d level little tiny things that truly are not much of a trade-off for all the health and energy you might get out of a clean diet Absolutely. but while we were concluding students were asking questions and to my left were two small microphones that we were not using on this panel and i took one microphone and put it straight up and one microphone and bent it straight down and the last question was are there any other benefits to a plant-based lifestyle that we haven't covered it naturally the only thing in my head is sexuality mm -hmm. so i point to the microphone and i say you know here's the before and after when you adopt a plant-based diet because one was straight down and one was straight up it took <laughs> the house down the students walked out you know with a smile and probably the only thing they're going to remember is that but you know humor is an effective teacher so thank you very much well also uh you're welcome i truly mean it i am a big fan of comedy and laughing of i know that also helps your health in general and uh yeah. appreciate your your humor and your the way yeah, you're presenting yeah. the information the, the 10 second hug releases oxytocin and a duchene smile the only good thing about douching is a duchene smile you get those little eyebrows way up high releases hormones and it's associated with good health and Certainly a good belly laugh is absolutely great for your health. So uh, I partake all the time. Life, you know, life is funny if you're not in extreme pain, and then you have to back off that approach. Well, there's the story of the woman who had cancer and cured it not through any type of medical means, but by laughter. And so she sat and watched funny movies all day. She had everyone around her only tell her funny, positive things. And she reversed her breast cancer completely without yeah. any medical intervention. 
I, uh, I know that gets into the wiggly, wiggly of medicine, but I believe stuff like that can happen. Absolutely. Does this diet work for everything besides heart disease? Is there certain things that it will never work for? What is your opinion? There's things we don't know, but the biggest, the most important, chronic diseases. And that word is, you know, in the medical world, why in the last 10 to 15 years of our life are we, you know, losing our mind and ending up in nursing homes and taking 14 medicines? And, you know, we may live longer than we did 20 years ago, but the data says we don't live better. Right. Um, that our lifespan is not a health span, as I said before. For most of those, I mean, heart disease, lung disease, diabetes, obesity, some of the what we call connective tissue diseases, there's clearly the ability to alter rheumatoid arthritis, lupus kind of illnesses. Multiple sclerosis has shown to be responsive to extremely clean diets by Dr. Terry Walls. The Walls Protocol and others, Dr. John McDougall and others have shown that. I mean, you know, it's a tra travesty that cancer patients in general, not always, don't get more education. I mean, Dr. Dean Ornish has absolutely shown the ability of a plant-based diet to alter the course of prostate cancer. And I don't think 2% of my patients with prostate cancer have ever heard that, mm -hmm. even though it's stuff published in the journal Urology and other prime, prominent medical journals. So, you know, it falls upon the cardiologist to tell them, you know, you can shrink this disease by eating in a way that I do and I uh, have to educate them. So, yeah, I mean, I don't think it's ever going to hurt somebody to do it, but, you know, there's certain diseases we don't know for sure. I mean, if you're struggling with a brain tumor, I'm not sure we have data that it's going to help you, but, you know, uh, it's boosting your immune system with mushrooms and having uh, a higher antioxidant level because you're eating lots of citrus and other things certainly can't hurt you. Just there isn't science on every single topic. Can you give any examples of specific diseases that you've seen heal that, you know, the person didn't think that they could, or maybe they had told this is chronic or this is terminal and you've been able to help them. Can you give us some examples of some of those? Well, yeah, and the most important is really cardiovascular disease. I know it's not sexy, and there's probably a lot of young people listening, and they're not thinking about their arteries clogging up, whether it's in their heart or their like your dick diet artery. But nonetheless, mm -hmm. it still remains the biggest problem that will you know, affect our health and potentially shorten our lifespan. So, you know, it's a miracle. I mean, and I say this after 26 years of practicing cardiology in about 10 years, it's a miracle that three to four weeks after somebody finally grabbing on to this clean, clean plant-based diet and, you know, just do the Ornish, do the Esselstyn, do the Barnard, do the McDougall, they'll, their, their need for medication goes down. And I mean, I've seen it. I didn't believe it early in my career, but it happens. It happened in the office. We have this giant thing in Detroit called the plant-based nutrition support group, kind of a grassroots thing we did to help people on their way to just give them some support and lectures. And we've got now over a thousand members and there's so many that will tell you, you know, I'm, I'm on no diabetic medicine for my adult diabetes. Uh, I don't need my blood pressure medicine. You know, this all has to be done carefully. So dramatic examples. Uh, and they'll all say, I love my internist who never told me this was an option. Until I watched Forks Over Knives, I had no clue. Until my neighbor told me he comes to this plant-based group, I didn't know my psoriasis might get better by eliminating dairy and, you know, doing an elimination diet and uh, upping my antioxidant load from fresh fruits and vegetables. So, um, you know, it. I'm, I'm struck all the time by how fast, particularly when we're going back to that endothelium, nitric oxide, Every bad meal you eat affects that quickly. Within an hour, you are temporarily damaging your arteries. Every Big Mac, every uh, bacon BLT you eat, mm -hmm. and every green smoothie and every chia pudding. I keep saying chia pudding because I'm standing in front of a refrigerator with a bunch of chia pudding. And every <laughs> you know beet salad and kale dish you eat does the opposite within 30 to 60 minutes. So... Our body's just waiting for us to get out of the way and feed it, uh, you know, fiber-rich, nutrient-rich, uh, antioxidant-rich whole foods that are brightly colored, and uh, it'll do the rest. Just let it let it heal. You know, and that doesn't work for everything, but it works for the big, big, big illnesses that drag people.
Plus mood. I mean, this is amazing science about your microbiome, a fancy word. Everybody repeat after me. My microbiome wants to love me. You know, your GI tract and that um, 10 trillion cells we have, but 100 trillion bacteria that are in our body, some on our skin, some in our mouth, but many of them in our GI tract. And there's no doubt the science favors that a clean diet favoring a plant-based diet creates the healthiest microbiome right now. Uh, makes a uh, the most dramatic example in my field. There's an awful chemical that's been recently described called TMAO, TMAO, not TMI, but TMAO. Mm -hmm. And if you take a vegan and you pay them enough and tell them eat a sirloin steak for research, and you measure their blood, they can't make this awful chemical that damages arteries. You take anybody off the streets, they eat a steak for fifty bucks. Of course, they're happy, and they make this stuff instantly. And it is wow. the bacteria in the gut. And we, we just grow this great garden of bacteria when you're eating clean and lean and green. And we don't do so well when we're eating an omnivorous. Now, we don't know what if you eat only grass-fed and, uh, you know, uh, kind of the ultimate paleo diet. It's, that study hasn't been done. But, um, you know, treat your bacteria well and your bacteria will treat you well. And that's all based on a, a good, healthy, clean diet that's not excess salt, oil, sugar. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for that. I've never heard that. That's really interesting. Very, very hot science in the last three years. It's going to change the course of cardiovascular disease because for the first time this week, the lab test came out. So I've been drawing this lab on my patients at first in the state of Michigan. And it's going to start spreading, but you know, it's going to define for people, you know, your gut is screwed up, baby. And uh, this is no game anymore. You're you're a TMA making machine and let's change your diet and uh, we can recheck it in a few weeks. I love it. All right, Dr. Khan, where can everyone find you online, follow you, stalk you, read your books? Yeah, sure. Comedy Central, Saturdays, 8 o'clock, <laughs> live in Ferndale, Michigan at the Green Space. Uh, no, I'm at uh, drjoelkahn.com, but that's D R. J-O-E-L-K-A-H-N.com. That'll take you to my clinic and my restaurant website. They're all there. And there's a free newsletter you can sign up for. But once you sign up for it, I will hound you every day with emails. No, I won't. <laughs> Just once a week, you can unsubscribe. And my books are available there. They're on Amazon. Another book coming out in January called The No BS Diet. And another one on mindfulness coming out uh, a little later in 2016. I love to write the Mind Body Green. I'm blogging all the time. So... Yeah, you know, and if people have questions, uh, there are places on my website to ask, and I can't give real specific medical advice, but the kind of superficial, meaningless questions you've been asking me, I can easily handle them. <laughs> say, okay, now you guys have been awesome. Wow. <laughs> I'm glad you're you enjoyed sexy, the interview. <laughs> you're sexy, you're savvy, you're right on target and hip and modern and everything's great that's a first dr khan no one else has really given a shit before on our own podcast but that's yes, great right. we need it, it. keeps us in check about what you're talking about let's just sell some product at the break <laughs> i think you're anyway. funnier than me and i i'm not sure how i feel about that uh -oh. <laughs> well let's have a walk off and see if we can uh, you can do blue ice and i'll see if you're you get on. underwear out quickly on the walk off <laughs> uh, too much too much zoolander well, thank you, ladies, for educating America. These are, seriously, although I, I am light and whimsical, you know, stuff like your microbiome, your TMAO, uh, clean diets, uh, uh, you know, reversing heart disease, preventing cancer, the potential to limit or reverse adult diabetes. I mean, this is about redoing your life for the better. So I encourage everybody get educated. Watch Forks Overnight. Watch Plant Pure Nation. Read an Esselstyn and Ornish or Barnard and McDougall, Jeff Novick, kind of the authors that are out there doing just great writing. And, you know, don't stand up to your doc, but be an activist and get educated and listen to nutritionfacts.org and check our website out called plantbased nutrition support group.org. You know, uh, work with your doctor. You may have to educate your healthcare provider about some of this nutritional stuff, but don't get beat down when they tell you, you know, where do you get your protein and, uh, this bacon stuff is nonsense and this plastic stuff, you know, it's new age and they're just scaring you to buy glass bottles. It's, it's the real deal. Yep. I couldn't agree more. And thank you for all yep. those resources. I will put them in the blog post with the show notes at foodhealsnation.com. And can you leave us with a tweetable and your Twitter handle? So something short and sweet for us to tweet. 
Yeah, uh, Twitter handle is at Dr. Khan, and I put hashtag, your dinner is your destiny, your fork is your fate. I love it. And I also have heard you say, health doesn't happen in a doctor's office, but where you work, live, and play, and pray. Yeah, I stole that from Mark Hyman. I love him. So uh, okay. I just... I- You got to say it three times and then you don't have to credit anybody. I think that's number three. I feel free. I'm alive, but that's absolutely (laughs) true. Doctor's offices are awesome when you got an ear infection. But uh, what we talked about today, this is where people learn it, which is okay. You know, uh, it's wonderful. In fact, you guys do a real responsible job of your research. It's awesome. Thank you so much for coming on today. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Blessings to all and good health to everybody. Thank you. Food Heals Nation, did you know that Americans spend an average of 90% of their time indoors and take about 20,000 breaths per day? According to the EPA, indoor air is two to five times more polluted than outdoor air, and in some cases, this is scary, up to 100 times more polluted. The data shows that air pollution is responsible for nearly 7 million premature deaths globally. That's why it's so important to filter the air in our homes. You remember my story after discovering toxic mold in my home almost a year ago, I realized the importance of having multiple high quality air filters in my home to protect myself, to protect the air that I'm breathing and the air that my beagle Lily is breathing. Think about every everyone in your household, your family members, your roommates, your kids, your cats, your dogs, your pets, right? We have to be so conscious of the air that we're breathing inside, but that's why I'm obsessed with Air Doctor. You can visit airdoctorpro.com, use the code FOODHEALS, and you can get up to 39% off an air purifier. Air Doctor filters out 99.99% of dangerous contaminants and allergens like pollen and pet dander and dust mites and mold and even bacteria and viruses. So your lungs don't have to. It's so easy to set up. It's quiet and I can rest easy knowing I'm breathing cleaner air every day when I'm working from home. If you work from home like me, you've got to filter your air. So head on over to airdoctorpro.com, use the promo code FOODHEALS, and depending on the model you pick, you'll receive up to 39% off or up to $300 off. This is exclusive to Food Heals Nation listeners. You'll also receive a free three-year warranty on any unit, which is an additional $84 value. Check it out by going to A-I-R-D-O-C-T-O-R-P-R-O.com, airdoctorpro.com, and use promo code FOODHEALS. When Luca's mom was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, she ran from doctor's office to doctor's office, getting more and more prescription medicine while her health just got worse, which is exactly what happened to my mom when she first had multiple sclerosis followed by cancer. Every pill introduced a new side effect and every side effect warranted a new pill. It was a vicious cycle with no healing in sight. In Luca's case, his mom found a different route. She found a doctor who specialized in root cause medicine. After 12 months, she completely reversed her autoimmune condition. And her son Luca began to think, why isn't all of medicine this personalized and data driven? And why doesn't everyone have access to this type of information? And that's when he created Index Health. Stories like these remind me of why I do this show, Food Heals Nation, and why I love Index Health, which you can learn more about at indexclinic.com slash foodheals. With Index Health, you get access to board-certified functional medicine trained doctors and functional trained nutritionists who use advanced lab tests to diagnose and treat chronic conditions. All treatment plans are 100% personalized, and doctor appointments are one hour long. They really take the time to deep dive into their patient's health. I only wish that something like Index Health was around when my mom was sick. To schedule your first appointment, visit indexclinic.com slash foodheals. Again, that's indexclinic.com slash foodheals.
Food Heals Nation, we are talking to two plant-powered doctors today. And just like I eat plant-based, I also want to make sure that my vitamins and the other supplements and things that I'm putting into my body are plant-powered as well. That's why I love Ritual. All their products are vegan certified, non-GMO, gluten-free, and allergen-free. There's no fillers, no colorants, no shady additives. You know, they have this delayed response, but no nausea. They are recommended by nutritionists and scientists. So let me tell you what I love. Well, I do take their daily multivitamin every day. They are those beautiful little yellow vitamins that are so pretty. They've probably been advertised to you on Instagram. Instagram. Um, and then I'm also obsessed with their protein powder, which they just came out with a few months ago. And I have the vanilla and I'm putting that in my smoothies every morning. It is this delicious handcrafted vanilla flavor made from a direct from farmer vanilla bean extract that's sustainably harvested in Madagascar. There's no added sugars, no sugar alcohols, and just like all ritual proteins, essential protein is soy-free, gluten-free, and non-GMO. As I said at the beginning, you're going to get 20 grams of pea protein plus a complete amino acid profile. It's made with essential choline to help fill common dietary gaps that a lot of us have because we're not getting the nutrition that we need from the food that we eat. So check it out. Shake up your ritual. Try something new, right? Ritual does offer a money back guarantee if you're not 100% satisfied or in love, but you're going to get 10% off during your first three months of trying Ritual. Go to ritual.com slash food heals. Add your essential protein today. That is ritual.com slash food heals. And Food Heals Nation, did you know that 99% of your molecules are water? That is why The quality of the water that you drink every day is so important. It literally determines the quality of your life. That's why I'm so excited to have partnered up with Analemma. Analemma is this revolutionary new device. And what it does is it takes your regular tap water and transforms it into its supercharged, structured, coherent state. So what does that mean? It means it's making your tap water healthy. (laughs) And it has amazing effects on the body and the brain. So the brain is actually the organ in the body, which is the most liquid. So water, of course, plays a crucial role in all of its functions. So while testing the influence of the analemma on brain waves, analemma noticed that within half an hour of people drinking this analemma water, an equilibrium occurred. Analemma used an EEG and noticed immediate positive effects of this analemma water in various parts of the brain, including noticing that cell phone usage disturbs this delicate balance and creates chaos in the brain waves, right? So what did they do? They applied the analemma water to cell phone users to find out whether it would restore the balance. And guess what? Within just a couple of minutes of drinking the water, the balance was restored. So I'm literally sitting in front of two computers right now, cell phone by my side, and I'm like, where's my analemma water, right? Because I need to detox from all of the digital chaos around me that is literally harming my brain as we speak. So analemma creates harmony. It creates equilibrium in our bodies and in our minds. So all you have to do is you get the analemma and you swirl it through your water and it transforms the water by rearranging the H2O molecules into a liquid crystalline structure. Amazing, right? Analemma has tested the water on humans, animals, and plants and the results were always remarkable. This water literally regenerates your entire body, it balances your brain waves and puts your your being into a state of coherence is what they like to say. So this is really cool. Use the coupon code FOODHEALS. You'll get 10% off your purchase. Absolutely worth it. That's at analemma-water.com, A-N-A-L-E-M-M-A-water.com. And the coolest thing I mentioned last time is that Analemma did an independent study with glycan age, showing that drinking this water rejuvenates a biological age by 1 to 12 years within 3 months. So my three months started this month. I don't know about you, but I'm going to get younger. If you want to join me, go to analemma-water.com and use coupon code FOODHEALS and you'll get 10% off your purchase.
We are very excited to have Dr. McDougall with us. Welcome, Dr. McDougall. Welcome. Welcome. So can you tell, we went through your bio, but can you tell Food Heals Nation just a little bit about yourself, who you are and what you do? Well, number one, what you need to know is I, I'm a grandfather. Mm -hmm. I have seven grandchildren. Wow. And pretty much, every, yeah, it's cool, huh? They go all, <laughs> they go all the way from seven months to uh, 12 years. And it's really what my whole life is about anymore. You know, I've enjoyed being a doctor, but the things that I do now for food are for them. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, you know, I used to be very much involved in curing people's diabetes and keeping them out of heart surgery and, you know, uh, stopping their multiple sclerosis. And that was fun. And I, and I like that. I like to help people. But these days, uh, even though I still do that, I have trained many other doctors to do it too. And it's really easy to do. But what I'm focused on these days, at least you know, in my personal thoughts, I sometimes get to share it with an audience is the the way the planet's going and the, the terrible impact that uh, our eating habits are doing on our planet. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, that that's what, what's most for me. Uh, I used to be very insensitive to uh, animal rights and the abuse of animals. Uh, I, I didn't have my eyes opened on that subject uh, probably until maybe 15 or 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. So I was really kind of a a uh, one one thinking kind of doctor just i was a doctor out there healing people until i discovered this food thing it was just so much more and had uh, so much more importance than uh you know keeping somebody from getting uh cancer or uh not that these things aren't very very important there are just issues that are so much more important when you can when you're talking about uh uh you know changing people's diets yeah so you know you know that's kind of where i'm at now and I know people get a little irritated with me when I run my clinics and they came there for me to get them off all of their high blood pressure pills and their diabetic pills. And I give them a little, uh, I give them a, uh, a little uh, rush about how we got to save this planet by get, getting off the beef and getting on the rice. I mean, Susie and I just have to tell you that that's our dream come true. Like you're our dream doctor, you know, yeah, no, like the fact that you would say things like that, because I feel like that's what's lacking in so many places these days. And people aren't talking about diet. They're not talking about the environmental impact. And you must be the best, most wisest grandfather for uh, those children, you know. Well, you know, that's why I'm doing it, because great. I, I've had my life and I'm nearly 70 years old. Yeah. And uh you know, I care for my children, but most I care for my grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I go out there and I fight the fight every day. Uh, but if you ask me what's what's the most important, that, that's what's important to me, most important to me. But I think you asked uh, how did all this get started and yeah. where I've been. Uh, I had lived in Michigan and uh, for, for 25 years. And I personally had very, very, very bad health. I... Uh, as a child, I had terrible stomach pains and horrible mm. constipation. I'd be embarrassed to tell you about it. <laughs> I had uh, poor endurance. I, I never did well in, in the on the athletic field. I got act, <clears throat> acne and oily skin as a kid. There are all, all kinds of minor problems that were, you know, were major to me then that I can relate back to what I ate. And then I went off to college to Michigan State University. To be what, I don't know. I had no idea what I wanted to be. And three months into college, I uh, had a massive, a massive stroke, mm -hmm. and it left me you know, completely paralyzed for two weeks. And uh, after I could move my thumb, I decided the doctors were doing nothing for me, and so I, 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 I left against medical advice. Wow! Wow! And, yeah, that's really so, bold. It's very brave. <laughs> At 18 years old, it was something. But I had enough of these people. Well, that's two really big things. Having a stroke at 18 is like unheard of. And then the fact that you were willing to, at that young age, go against their orders. I guess, well, teenagers always do go against no, orders. No, but when you don't have they? something, I would think that when you have something that major of that magnitude, I mean, yeah. a stroke is very serious at that age and at that time, you know, to to have the the, to actually listen to your gut and say, nope, this isn't working for me and I got to find something better. Uh, that's very work. brave. They were, I did a lot of a lot of things. The stroke did for me, but um, still to the, today, you know, when I go out uh, windsurfing, I do a, a terrible port jibe. 
Um, uh, 50 years later, I walk with a very noticeable limp. Mm-hmm. But, you know, those are the things that you think, would think would be bad for what happened to me. But the good thing was, is I was at uh, Grace Hospital in Detroit, Michigan, one of the biggest hospitals in the, the area. Mm-hmm. And uh, everybody wanted to, kiss, wanted to come to see me because, as you say, a stroke isn't that common. It happens to about a, a thousand teenagers a year in the United States. So, you know, they all wanted to come and check me out. And they come in and do their physicals and their tests on me and you know, we get to done, done with the interview, and I'd say to him, uh, what's wrong with me? What are you going to do for me, and when am I going to go home? And all they would do is they just shake their heads. And I said, heck, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, so I, I, went back, I went back to college, and very quickly, after a, a, a little touch with veterinary medicine, I, uh, my course was set to medical school, and then... Mm-hmm. Went to medical school and I met my wife, who has been my partner for 44 years, Aww. when I uh, was in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And then we moved to Hawaii just to have some fun. And mm-hmm. we had a great, great time for a year. I was in a surgical uh, in internship and we didn't want to leave. And so I looked for a job and the job available was as a sugar plantation doctor. Mm-hmm. It's just a doctor that works uh, taking care of people who are workers on a sugar, sugar plantation. You do everything for them. Mm-hmm. I had 5,000 people to take care of. Wow. And uh, I caught 100 babies. I did brain surgery in the middle of the night. I did, you know, pretty much everything that had to be done because I was it. I was the doctor. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it was an experience nobody gets today. I mean, maybe if you go to Africa, you have a, yeah. that kind of experience. But we were just in Hawaii uh, about four days ago. We took uh, one of our uh, McDougal adventure trips. We take people <clears throat> uh, to different parts of the world so they can have a great vacation, eat well, and be with nice people. And we just, just got back uh, from seven days from Kauai. So it brings up a lot of memories for me, those days we lived uh, on, in Hawaii, which was 15 years one of the things that they don't don't have anymore is they don't have sugar plantations, and they don't have sugar sugar plantation doctors. Mm-hmm. I learned I learned a couple of real important lessons there, because I was pretty much the only doctor there. There were three other doctors that who had similar training. Uh, I had to do everything, and uh, I was very very disappointed in my uh, outcomes. My patients did did not do well. Mm-hmm. I, I would I do pretty good, you know, with things like lacerations, sewing them up, and um, straightening broken bones, and lancing abscesses, and giving them antibiotics. But when it came to chronic dis- disease, which is what most of the people listening to this show had mm-hmm. have now, my plant, plant plantation patients they had these, you know, chronic obesity, chronic stomach pains, chronic high blood pressure, chronic diabetes, chronic cancer, chron- multiple sclerosis, arthritis, you know, on and on and on. Uh, 80% of my practice was chronic disease, and I did nothing, nothing, nothing good for these people. I'd give them, you know, bags full of pills. It was mm-hmm. a, it was free medicine. It was a they had, we had our um, own infirmary in our own hospital, so they were completely covered. Mm-hmm. So it didn't cost them anything, and you know, I kn- knew after a short time that what I was doing didn't work, and it was so frustrating after three years. Wow. To be to want to be a doctor that did things. I don't know if you remember Marcus Welby. Ben Casey and Dr. Kildare. But those are the doctors I wanted to be like, those TV doctors, and my patients weren't getting better. Mm -hmm. So it became a very frustrating experience for me, and that was one of the reasons I left after three years to become a board-certified internist, because I wanted to learn the tricks. I wanted to learn how to help my patients. Mm -hmm. I hadn't learned. I don't know why, I just hadn't learned. The other thing that happened to me during this uh, three years of my life as we lived on the sugar plantation, I took care of uh, first, first, second, third, and fourth generation Filipinos, Chinese, Japanese, and Koreans. My first generation, born in their native land, uh, learned a diet of rice and vegetables and almost no meat and no dairy. Mm-hmm. And they moved to uh, the Big Island to start new families and, and a whole new life. And They married, married over here and usually married over here. They brought a bride. And they'd have children, and the children, uh, they were a little bit more westernized. And mm-hmm. so they got a little fatter and a little sicker mm-hmm. as they ate less rice and more American food. And by the time you got to the third generation, I was taking care of people as fat, if not fatter, than, I, than the ones I'd learned uh, from Detroit. So it was, it was very obvious to me that food had something to do with disease. Yeah. 
And uh, the worse she ate, the better you were, the thinner you were. You know, if you skip the first two food groups, the dairy and the meat group, and just lived on starches, vegetables, and fruits, you were health healthiest and strongest and best looking of all the people. Yeah. So it really made me question everything. And when I went back to uh, Oahu, where I attended the uh, uh, John Burns uh, School of Medicine uh, to become an internist, I had access to the medical library. And my eyes had been opened. And I went to the library and I just spent you know, all my free time, which was a lot when you're working as a training doctor, I spent all my free time reading the, the science. And there were tens of thousands of papers that's, that said what I saw, and that is when people live on starch-based diets, and just to clarify that for your listeners what I mean, is starch is a high-calorie veg vegetable food, high in carbohydrate or sugar calories. Mm -hmm. It's like rice, corn, potatoes, beans, peas, lentils, sweet potatoes, potatoes, beans, peas. Like I said, those are your starchy foods. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd found that, you know, tens of thousands of papers were written and put in the library shelves that said the same thing, that people who ate these, those kinds of diets avoided the common diseases that we had in the U.S. Oh, really? That, uh, Back then, everyone yep. was saying that. Oh, oh this isn't. This isn't. This is in 1970, uh, 1976. Amazing. And they were saying it. Uh, they were saying it uh, the, uh, for a previous 100 years, but these uh, articles never got any attention. They were basically worthless mm -hmm. because they promoted no business, no money. Of course. So, and, and I mean, it's just a fact. It's not a conspiracy. And they were, you know, dust collecting on the shelves. Well, I had this passion, this interest, and what I found out was that the same things that prevent disease also allow the body to cure disease. When you stop throwing gasoline on a fire, things get a lot better. And so I saw back, uh, you know, back in the 20s, uh, even, even earlier than that, there were doctors who know the things, who knew what I know now. And... Uh, 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 they were taking patients with the rich diseases and they were putting them on simple diets. Mm -hmm. Dr. Russell Henry Chittenden was one of the earliest. He, he worked in about 1907. He was um, the head of Yale's uh, uh, physiology department. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he would take, take people just like I take care of now and he would change their diet and they would perform better as athletes and they would lose weight and their arthritis pain went away. I mean, all the things that happens now in my practice, he did that. And then there was a, another guy named Walter Kempner who came from Germany just before World War II in 1939 to Duke University. And he started something to something called the rice diet. Mm -hmm. Some of your listeners have heard of the rice diet. It's the diet of rice and fruit and fruit juice and sugar. And uh, he published scientific papers, uh, great papers, wonderfully done papers, in the journals up until about 1953 and that showed all the things that I do today, they did back then with a little stricter diet, but the same thing happens with the diet I use. It's you know, essentially the same diet, right. except with a lot more variety. And they would uh, you know, take people with very severe high blood pressure, like 240 over 140, and bring it to normal, uh, just with this diet in 60% of the cases. They were curing type 2 diabetes with a diet that was 93% sugar. They, what? Uh, this is you know, blowing my mind right I now. I know. This is new information. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Okay. When I say sugar, what I'm saying is uh, they ate white rice, mm -hmm. juice, fruit, and table sugar. So and some, some of the patients' diets, because they were so sick, you know, like with kidney disease, and rice has 5% of the calories as uh, protein. Mm -hmm. That much protein was too much for their kidneys to handle, so he had to make as much as half as half of the diet as table sugar, so he didn't overload the protein for the kidneys. In got it. People. And, I, I mean, he did, when I say cure, he got them back to life. Yeah. Uh, the same thing with uh, cor uh, coronary artery disease. You probably heard of Dr. Ornish mm -hmm. first in coronary artery disease, and they prove it by doing PET scans and angiograms. So back then, we're talking about in the late 40s, 
Uh, they showed reversal of coronary artery disease by changing in a part of the e uh, EKG called the ST segment. And uh, what would happen is, is something that you see on the EKG that shows artery blockage, it would uh, completely reverse in half the patients. And um, people with terrible congestive heart failure, you know, they're, you looked at their chest x-ray and their, <clears throat> their heart was as big as the, the, their whole chest cavity. And they would reduce them down to normal size with the rice diet. Uh, in about half the cases, uh, they were curing psoriasis, mm -hmm. rheumatoid arthritis, and all this was going on. And I want you to know that the rice diet was the main support of Duke University for two decades. It was at Duke for seven decades. That's amazing. I'm yeah. from Chapel Hill, North Carolina, next to Durham, where Duke yeah. is. I grew yeah. up knowing people that have gone there, and I've never heard of this. Yeah, really? You've heard of people going to the rice diet? Yeah, it was amazing. A lot of people went there just because they were too fat. Mm -hmm. Of course, they had great results with morbid obesity. But the, the people Walter Kemper liked to take care of are kind of like the ones I like to take care of. And that is, uh, you, you, get, you get enjoyment in life from helping people. Mm -hmm. And so one of my mottos is, the sicker you are, the happier I am. Because <laughs> 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 the more I get to help you. So, uh, no, it's, it's been going on for a long time. Dr. Time. McDougall, can I jump in and ask a question? Because what you're saying is, is I've, always, I've always loved fruit. I grew yeah. up in a family that my mom gave us lots of fresh fruit um, and juices and, and mixed with vegetable juices, but I've always loved fruit. And most people I meet in, when we do our podcasts or in the, in the healing world in general tend to say, oh, no, fruit has too much sugar. But I always, I'm like, no, my body craves fruit. I feel good when I'm eating fruit. So can you talk a little bit about that and, sure. and in its relation to how the rice diet helped diabetes? Because I'm, I'm kind of sitting here going, that's what I always thought. But no one, no one's ever told, no one's ever backed me up. So you're okay. backing me up. <laughs> it, it's a little bit more uh, scientifically complete and a little bit easier to understand. If you realize that we are sugar seekers, uh, if you remember your biology lessons, the tip of the tongue tastes pleasurably sugar, just like it, it tastes ple pleasurably salt. We are also salt seekers. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's for people. I have a cat, my last pet. I have a cat who has no sugar tasting taste buds on the tip of his tongue. He has taste buds for protein. I throw a potato down in front of him. He just bats it around as a ball of yarn. That's <laughs> And it's the same thing if people would naturally go for their instincts in terms of meat. Uh, you take any reasonable person and you walk them down the meat aisle at Safeway or Publix or Times and you walk them down the meat aisle and ask them to open their eyes and their nostrils. And by the end of that trip down that meat aisle, uh, they're nauseated. It's disgusting. You know, we're naturally repelled by those uh, sights and smells. Mm -hmm. Now, my cat Einstein, if I took him to that supermarket and I gave him a chance to get over the counter, he'd be, he'd be clawing the butcher and eating that stuff like it was his own, like it was his own food, his diet. Mm -hmm. See, so we are, we are physically designed as sugar seekers. In, in Kempner's diet, 93% of the diet was sugar. Uh, the, you know, people love that. They love to eat that way. And the reason you love to eat fruit is because that, that's one of the more intense sugars. Now, what I have to say about fruit is I don't think it makes a good diet to be a fruitarian and, I, and I'll tell you, you can do it you know Steve Jobs did it for a while and mm -hmm. I met a few people have done it for a while the reason I don't think it's a, a, the best diet and the reason I don't know of any populations of people who have been on an all fruit diet is because fruit sugar is simple sugar and the, uh, the satisfaction is limited uh, you're only satisfied with sugar for just a few uh, uh, fruit for just a few minutes and you need something that will sustain you sometimes throughout several days, and sugar will leave you uh, wanting more sugar if it's in a simple sugar form. Uh, I don't think it's any particular problem for most people to eat, you know, three, three, two, three, four sugars a day. When um, fall comes around here and my nectarine tree goes into bloom, I'll go out there because the, the nectarines are rotten in three days. I'll go out there, I'll get a bushel basket full of nectarines, and I'll eat them all myself. Mm-hmm. But I don't think that'd be a good thing for me to do every day, 365 uh, days of the year. It is simple sugar. Uh, I think we tolerate it pretty well, but you could convince me that it's not so good for the teeth, all that sugar. Right. I, don't know, I don't know that for sure. 
Uh, but I do know it leaves you uh, unsatisfied quickly. What you need is you need starch. That's the kind of sugar I talk about. When you sit down and eat a meal of rice, which, by the way, is uh, synonymous for the word food in Asia. They, you know, they, they interchange the word. Mm -hmm. In China, the, the, the greeting, you know, good morning or how are you, is have you had your rice today? <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. So, you know, a, a rice uh, or starch has been the diet of all large, successful populations of people throughout all of verifiable human history. If you think about it, uh, uh, Aztecs, Aztecs and uh, uh, Mayans are known as the people of the corn. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and, and if you go to South, South America and the Andes, uh, potatoes are the food. Uh, you know, they have 400 different species of potatoes. And when I went there about uh, 20 years ago, everybody was thin except for the, for the people who worked in the restaurants who prepared and uh, served the food to the tourists. That's interesting. Otherwise, there are no, no, no fat people. <laughs> uh, the, the, uh, the, the subject of TV news right now is uh, the breadbasket of the world. Uh, Egypt, mm -hmm. Saran, Iran, mm -hmm. Iraq. Mm -hmm. That's known as the breadbasket of the world. You know, bread, is, bread is the staff of life. Uh, you know, it goes on and on and on you find a population of civilized people up until, say, 50 years ago. You find a population of civilized people, and I'll show you people where 90% of their diet was from one starch or another. In China, for example, uh, before 1980, 90% of the food intake was rice. Before 1980, fewer than 1% of the population had type 2 diabetes. In this past 35 years, rice consumption has gone down, Consumption of animal foods and vegetable oils has doubled, and the uh, incidence of diabetes has gone from less than one percent to twelve percent, and half of the, half of the people in China are pre-diabetic, and that's because of the shift in food. Now you see it all over the world. It's not just sure, yeah, China. You see it in Vietnam. You see it in uh, I mean, Mexico. Used to be a very trim population of people living on uh, corn and beans and squash. Now Mexico City brags to be the, the most obese city in the world. You know, what happened in 35 years? What happened is people gave up starch mm -hmm. and were fooled by the meat and dairy and oil industries yeah. that the right way to be healthy is to eat their products. Even though it, it is such an unbelievable lie, I almost can't tell it. But I have to. <laughs> you know, if, 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 if I say protein, you say... How do you get your protein? Oh, you say meat. Oh, yes, I say meat. Say meat, okay. Allison. Say meat. If, you say meat. If I say calcium, you say... Milk. All right, you got it. <laughs> but, but what you need to know, and, and I've been through the science, you know, over the last 40 years, and believe me, I am not making a mistake. I know what you're you not. Need, what, you need, what you need to know is there has never been a case of dietary protein deficiency whenever people had enough calories to eat, unless they were starving to death, they were, then they were deficient in everything. There's no such thing as kwashi or core. That, that, that occurs with starvation. There's no isolated protein deficiency. Remember, Walter Kempner took rice, which had 5% of its calories as protein. And he had to cut it in half, down to two and a half percent, because it was too much for some of his patients. Uh, protein content of, uh, of uh, you know, some of your meats is or fifty percent, and your, your, your turkeys and things like that go even higher. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's no such thing as protein deficiency. It's never existed. Yet an entire industry has scared yes. and lied to the public that they must eat their food or they'll wither away. I know. And I love that you're saying this. Thank you so much for clarifying this because when I went vegetarian years ago, that's all I got. Where do you get your protein? Where do you get your protein? And this was my response, not from studying, not from going to any type of medical school, just from common knowledge. I said, who's dying of a protein deficiency that thinks that I'm now going to die when I'm eating much healthier than everyone who's asking me that damn question? So, well, you know, thank you. The, the students, excuse me, the doctors you see today 
when you start talking about diet, that's the first thing they mention. Mm -hmm. Just make sure you get enough protein. So, you know, it's, it's, just, it's so ridiculous. Okay, let's continue this game. <laughs> we, we already got halfway into it. Uh, I, I, I say calcium, you say milk. But you need to know there has never been a case of dietary calcium deficiency ever reported on any natural diet. It does not exist. Right. The disease they play off of is osteoporosis, right. which is due to high protein intake, uh, in other words, meat and hard cheeses and eggs and poultry, because now these high protein foods, and they're made of amino acids. Mm -hmm. And these acids have to be dealt with when they go into the body. And the way they're dealt with is the bones they dissolve to release alkaline material. And that's how you get osteoporosis and kidney stones and the protein damages the uh, liver and the kidneys and so on. It's, it's just, uh... anyway, okay, I want one more for you. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. I say omega-3 fats. Salmon. Fish oil. <laughs> fish. <laughs> fish. You, you need to know no fish has ever made an omega-3 fat. Fish cannot desaturate at the carbon-3 position, nor can any other animal. Only plants can make omega-3 fats. The reason that a fish has omega-3 fat is because it eats algae and seaweed. Why does everyone think they have to take fish oil? It's making me sick to my stomach. But isn't well, you know, there one omega that's not in, like if you have, because there's a brand of, of omega oils that I've seen that I've used, and they say that there's one that's not in the flaxseed, but that is in the fish oil. One you know, of the I, three, I, six, I, or nine. I, I don't remember which one. I, I can't remember what that would be. They, you know, they sometimes say that uh, people can't make enough DHA. Uh, they print some, and that, 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 of course, is made in fish. So that's probably, it's probably DHA. But it, it doesn't make any difference. It's completely untrue. There have been populations of hundreds of millions of people who never ate a fish ever in their whole life. Right, exactly. You know, they didn't live near an ocean or, or a stream or a lake. Yeah, so I mean, how can it? How can what everybody knows to be true? In fact, that's the statement that sh should set you off to knowing there's a problem here. Everybody knows it's true when it's a hundred percent wrong, and they get away with it. And it's, they do it with a marketing technique uh, called unique positioning. Mm -hmm. What uh, a company does is they find something unique about their product, and they just pump that to the public. So, what's unique about milk? It's got lots of calcium. What's unique about Meat and eggs, you know, it's got uh, it's got a lot of protein. What's unique about fish? It's got a lot of omega three fats. Whether they're important or true it doesn't make a darn bit of difference. This is just how marketing works. And by the way, this is not a conspiracy. You know, the people who are doing this are people just like you and I. They just have a, a little different orientation and knowledge. They're just trying to keep the business going. Keep capitalism. The it's capitalism. That's exactly what it is. I mean, right. It is, sure. Well, that's that's kind of the way it is. You know, everybody knows starches are fat. Uh, everybody knows, et cetera, the things that we talk yeah. about. But see, but what everybody knows is the reason that 80% of the people in this country are overweight. You know, half the people will die of heart disease. Right. One out of three will die of cancer. You know, they're all constipated. They're all, you know, they all have purple pill, prilosec, nexium deficiency. Right. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's... It, it it is it, it, it was just a little bit, you know, just a little bit different than the truth, or maybe there was a little truth there. It would make sense, but since it's the entirely uh, the opposite of what's true, it makes no sense, and, I, and it really doesn't make any sense to me, uh, except for one one basic nature of human me beings, and that is, that is they try and get as much as they can, sure. and that means money. Yeah. So. It's you know, all it's, about the money. It always comes back to the money. Anything yeah. you're being told on the media, TV, commercials, PSAs, find out who is sponsoring it, and then you'll know the truth. <laughs> yeah, you'll, you'll at least know why yeah. they're, li they're lying. Yeah. And, uh, but, and they are. And, you know, it's sad. And, and, you know, if it wasn't for the fact that you were killing mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters and sons and daughters... You know, if we were just taking in uh, and uh, giving shorter lives to flat screen TVs, that might be something. Right. But that's not what we're doing. I, 
you would think there was some level of moral consciousness that would, and there are, I mean, you're standing up and I'm right. standing up and exactly, you know, so there are some people who can see the truth and uh, care enough to, well, I wouldn't say risk their reputation. I never feel my reputation is at risk. I don't care life. what they think. <laughs> yeah. but in all my years I've been doing this, I've been doing this for, for 38 years. Uh, I've never felt threatened. I've never been criticized. I've never been confronted. That's awesome. Ever. I mean, never? Never. Because I feel like I mean, we've not, been not confronted. Yeah, we've you been know? criticized. <laughs> oh, no, no, no not, not, not to my face. <laughs> right. We, right. Got, we got something interesting going that may get, get people's attention. You know who P PCRM is? PCRM. Physici yep. P Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. Got it. Neil, Neil Bernard's group. Well, Neil Bernard and I have worked together for 35 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, with uh, my inspiration and his ability to get things done, we filed suit in uh, Northern California District Court uh, against the egg industry. And this will be heard soon. The egg industry. The egg industry, Got yeah. It. Mm -hmm. See, the egg industry, what they did is they loaded the di dietary guidelines uh, advisor board with members of the egg industry and they spent the last 20 years uh, doing research that shows the eggs are less harmful or not harmful to people. They bought the research, they paid for it. Right. Uh, if you look at my uh, January 2016 newsletter, I wrote all about this and you can see the document there. I put the document there and Shows you how, you know, like 94% of the research that's out there these days is paid for by uh, the egg industry. And in fact, the, the actual number is uh, 10 out of 12 studies that were used by the advisory committee. Mm -hmm. was paid for the, by the egg industry. One was paid for by the sardine industry mm -hmm. to promote cholesterol in sardines. And the identification of the 12th paper but is, is not known. Well, see, I looked at this myself back in uh, 1983 in a book I published called uh, The McDougal Plan. And uh, there have been hundreds of studies on how dietary cholesterol, that means animal foods, that's where dietary cholesterol comes from, animal foods, not mm -hmm. plants. Mm -hmm. uh, when you feed uh, uh, dietary to cholesterol to either animals or to people, it raises their cholesterol and increases their risk of dying of, of uh, heart disease. Well, all this came up with the dietary goals which were published in 1977, and industry decided to fight back because big food did not want to end up with the des destiny of big tobacco mm. when the Surgeon General Luther Terry came out with the Sur Surgeon General's report on smoking and health. Right. And big tobacco lost their butts. Uh, you know, there used to be 50% of people smoked in the 1970s, it's fewer than 20% of people smoke now. So, you know, it basically ruined big tobacco. And I want to point out that the, back then there were doctors in the advertisement smoking. So think about that and what's happening now. When you see things on TV, they're just as fake as they were back then. It's just a different industry. Interesting. Right. So so the meat and dairy industry, they got real excited about this and they put, you know, they got $23 million a year to put into uh, countering any false, any, 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 any information that degrades the egg industry. Right. So they pay, they pay for studies. They buy professors like uh, Alice Lichtenstein from Tufts University. And she happens to, by the way, head the advisory committee. Mm. She, she works for the, for the egg board. So many conflicts of interest going on. Oh, it's just amazing. Well, anyway, we, uh, we file a lawsuit. Uh, the lawsuit, I have every reason to believe it will be heard. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll become public knowledge that the egg industry lied and uh, forced the public to believe something that was not true that ended up killing people. And my plea as a physician is in, in, the, um, in our suit, it says that uh, the egg industry and the diet, and actually the USDA and uh, the Department of Health and Human Services, which is behind the dietary gui guidelines, my complaint was that this line in the dietary guidelines 2015 for, for Americans. These dietary guidelines saying that uh, cholesterol is a 
is a nutrient of non-concern, and you can eat as much fat as possible. My complaint is they have hurt me professionally and personally as a doctor and putting me up in a position where I can't help my patients prevent disease and for me to help them reverse disease. Because they're being lied to. Because they're being lied to. Wow. Now, I don't, you know, that's, I, I have to have a personal complaint. That, that's my complaint is they are inhibiting my ability to do my profession as a doctor mm -hmm. by telling these big fat lies. And we'll see what happens. I mean, they're going to have, you know, we got a budget of like $15. <laughs> 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 you know, they, they got a budget of $23 million. Uh, and so it's going to be pretty interesting. But I want to tell you, we have some pretty smart people on our side. And uh, uh, I know the research and some of these other people. And they know that we know that they're lying and why they've lied. And we know what their campaign is and we know what the harm is. So we, if we get our day in court and they don't happen to have bought the, the judge and the jury, we might do something. But they probably bought the judge and the jury. Oh, I love this so much. But yeah, then I'm scared. Like, who else have they gotten to? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, it's in, it's in the, my January 2016 newsletter, which is free it's on my website so you can read about it it's fun you can read the the uh, official lawsuit too okay i love this so much so we're going to take a quick break and we're going to come right back and we're going to talk about all the things that you're doing now how to get on your newsletter what to do if someone is diagnosed with cancer what your right foods are so we'll be right back food heals nation if you're like me you know that drinking enough water is imperative for our hydration and our detox and i personally try to drink half my body weight in ounces of water per day but have you thought about the quality of water that you are drinking so according to the environmental working group virtually every home in the u.s has harmful contaminants in its tap water so ditch the tap water ditch the cheap water filters and check out my favorite water purifier company, AquaTrue. You can visit AquaTrue.com, use the coupon code FOODHEALS for 20% off any AquaTrue purifier. AquaTrue purifiers use a four-stage reverse osmosis purification process, and their countertop purifiers work with no insulation, no plumbing. I set it up myself, don't worry, it's easy. It removes 15 times more contaminants than ordinary pitcher filters and are specifically designed to combat chemicals like PFAs in our water supply. The filters are affordable and long lasting, no changing filters every two to three months. AquaTrue filters last from six months up to two years. AquaTrue comes with a 30 day money back guarantee and even makes a great gift. Today, my listeners will receive 20% off any AquaTrue purifier. Just go to AquaTrue.com, that's A Q U A T R U.com, and enter the code FOODHEALS at checkout. That's 20% off any AquaTrue water purifier when you go to AquaTrue.com and use code FOODHEALS. <music> Food Heals Nation, I love my plant-based nutrition. I love getting all the colors on my plate, but I can't always get it all in in one day, if you know what I'm saying. You can probably relate, especially if you've got a busy schedule. It's really hard to get all the nutrients that you need on the go. Even if you had all the time in the world to juice the vegetables, eat massive salads, right? You may not love the taste of the dark leafy greens or the amount of time it takes to clean the juicer. We've all been there, right? And as we know, a lack of nutrition can lead to awful things, stress, low energy, moodiness or bad moods, and long-term issues, right? we got to get our nutrition in. And Organifi makes it super easy to fill your life with more nutrition using their delicious, and I mean delicious, superfood blends. You can just take a scoop and add it to a glass of water to energize and nourish your day with their carefully picked adaptogens, fruits, vegetables, medicinal mushrooms, and so much more. It's one of the healthiest and easiest choices that you can make each and every day. You can shop at Organifi.com. Use the coupon code of FOODHEALS. You'll get 15% off anything in the store. That's Organifi, O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com. Coupon code FOODHEALS to save 15% off. 
And if you need a recommendation on where to get started, Food Heals Nation, I think I've tried all of the Organifi powders at this point, and they're all perfect. They have the green juice, the Harmony, the gold, the red juice. I am really into Organifi gold. It is like what I do before bed. It gives me sweet dreams, and it tastes delicious like a turmeric latte. I also really like the Harmony. That is the cacao supplements, uh, and it's got those superfoods and adaptogens as well to support inner balance and bliss. So those are my recommendations. Again, Organifi.com. Use my coupon code FOODHEALS. You'll get 15 percent off anything in the store. All right, Food Heals Nation, you know that I'm just obsessed with finding new products and new ways to get different types of nutrition into my body, help my cells really thrive every single day. So there's a new product that I'm so excited to tell you about. It's called MitoPure. It is at, by my friends at Timeline Nutrition. So let's talk about cellular energy. Cellular energy is like your personal health speed limit, right? Like we can only go so fast. When your energy is low, your body's healthy processes slow down too. So maybe it's like slow digestion or moving more slowly throughout the day. So we've got to rebuild that cellular energy, right? It's essential to our good health, particularly as we get older. So my friends over at Timeline Nutrition have launched this awesome product and it has shown to boost cellular energy to get your body back into the fast lane so we can drive a little faster here people it is mitopure it has the potential to become a landmark nutrient in the advancement of human health sounds revolutionary to me right i totally trust timeline nutrition i'm impressed by their science and i wanted to recommend it to you mitopure comes in powder form that you can mix into your favorite plant based yogurt or your favorite smoothie, however you want to take it. So this is how we improve our mitochondria. That's one of the best things we can do for our health. So check out MitoPure from Timeline Nutrition. It's never been easier to get healthy. Go to TimelineNutrition.com. Use my promo code FOODHEALS. You'll get 10% off the plan of your choice. And you guys, it's anti-aging. Clinical trials have shown that 500 mg of MitoPure taken daily can significantly not only improve your mitochondrial health, but slow down the aging process and contribute to improved muscle strength. So whether you're 30 years old, all the way up to 100 years old and beyond, check out MitoPure by Timeline Nutrition. Again, go to TimelineNutrition.com, promo code FOODHEALS, you'll get 10% off your order. All right, Food Heals Nation, we're back with Dr. John McDougall. His mantra is only sick people go to the doctor, and the annual physical exam is a ritual to be avoided. Love that. This is a subject that's really close to my heart. Can you tell me about multiple sclerosis? And what is, because um, Food Heals Nation knows that my mother had multiple sclerosis for years and years and years up until her cancer diagnosis, which is uh, the treatment of cancer is what ultimately killed her. But up until then, she was suffering from multiple sclerosis to the point where she could no longer walk. And I, at the time, we had no awareness of diet, nutrition, alternative medicine. So what is a typical protocol? Like if someone is diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, what is the first thing they should do? And how do you help people um, with multiple sclerosis? Well, first, first, you have to understand that MS is only a disease of Western civilization. It, uh, it once upon a time never occurred in China, Japan. Wow. Now, now of course it does. Uh, the work on it was originally done by Roy Swank, who is my friend, and we have legal relationships together. He's dead, mm -hmm. but we, I have legal legal responsibilities to him. And uh, he did work that showed that MS virtually is stopped when you take the animal foods out of the diet, and it's published in the Lancet. And, Mm -hmm. as published in uh, American, American Journal of Clinical Nutrition and all kinds of big MS journals. He was head of neurology at o Oregon Health Science University for 23 years. He took care of over 5,000 people with MS and virtually stopped the disease in every single person. Oh I'm sorry, God. can you repeat that? He took care of over 5,000 people with MS? Yeah. And they virtually stopped practically all of them yeah, in their it, MS? It, well, what they were, yes, yeah, and, that, and this, is, this is communications that I have recorded from him, but he published uh, work in The Lancet in 1991 about MS and showed 
that uh, the people with MS died like three times faster than those without MS. A really good research. He's a very good researcher, very good man. Well, anyway, he was my friend, and uh, I uh, learned about diet and MS when I was in, on my neurology rotation when I was a resident for internal medicine. And uh, I, re I started a foundation, a 501c3 foundation, raised about three quarters of a million dollars. And I went up to HSU and I said, I'd like to do a randomized control, radar blinded study of the best quality you can possibly do on uh, MS patients and I'm putting them on my diet. Well, there's, if you want to re read about the results, it's in my July 2014 newsletter. Okay. We, sh we showed some amazing things uh, about uh, diet and how the diet we teach can be be followed with great consistency. One of the most inter interesting things that we found was that uh, you know, we have a control group and an intervention group. Is the control group stated a diet for a year at 40% fat? The intervention group, those who went to my clinic, uh, dropped their fat intake to 15% and maintained that for a year. And what we what we found from our uh, uh, evaluations is that 85% of the people who went to our intervention mm -hmm. followed the diet 100% for a year. We also found a 20 pound weight loss sustained for a year and a 20 point drop in cholesterol sustained for a year. Mm -hmm. So we permanently changed people's diets. Uh, yeah. And it was, a, you know, it's amazing research. Uh, we have uh, presented it at two meetings and in two abstracts, but we're finding it near impossible to get published because the journals are owned by the MS drug companies and the food companies, and they have no interest in work like this. But we are going to get it published. I mean, we're going to second-tier journals now just to get it out. But when we went, when we went to the big five journals, like the New England Journal of Medicine, and JAMA, and so on, uh, they, they just, just turned us down flat. And these are some of the best researchers in the world at one of the best universities in the world and one of the most important studies to the world. And uh, anyway, that's kind of the way it went. But you, you can stop the disease with a change in diet. You could also re reverse some of the problems because people lose weight and they get physically stronger. But this is multiple scler sclerosis. These are multiple scars. Mm -hmm. Scars won't go away. But what you can do in terms of stopping the disease, as Dr. Swank told me on several occasions, I asked him what the failure rate was, and he said about 1 in 200. Oh, my God. Yeah. Dr. McDougall, I just thank you for telling us this story and however we can support getting your research out there. Like, we're a small podcast, but I want to spread this knowledge with the world. It okay. is so close to my heart. I have such chills, and I'm feeling so many, so much emotion. I'll I, I, I tell you what you do. I'll tell you what you do. I was ra raised, I was able to raise through uh, my friends $750,000. That's amazing. That's, a, that's about the amount of money it takes to study for a drug company to study whether or not it's worthwhile to do a study. Mm -hmm. We need seven million five hundred thousand oh dollars. You know, I mean, well, why not? Look at what they, have to, they put into these pills. Right. And, uh, you know, a, a new machine. And, and often they turn out to be more harmful than most often. They turn out to do more harm than good to people. So the reason we can't get the money to do this it cuts people's food bill by 40%. It stops their sickness. There's no financial interest. This is not a conspiracy. It is just business at, a, at its worst. Right. It is. And I've had a very dear friend that was diagnosed with MS um, who was very aware of diet and, and healing her body, um, taking control of, of her own healing, and asked her doctor, you know, will my can I change my diet? Will it affect anything of, about my health, my MS? She said, no, you can go out and eat a pint of haagen it won't matter. Well, see, the, the problem with that, and the, and the real uh, criminal problem with that, and I do, I do mean that, is uh, this doctor uh, was trained to learn about the human body and didn't get any education in nutrition. Right, right. And didn't take any trouble to tell the person. This would be like, <coughs> say you believed 
uh, heart surgery worked, which it doesn't for chronic coronary artery disease. But everybody else believes it does, except for those who read the science. Say you believe that it, it, it would be a great advantage for somebody to have an angioplasty or to have open heart surgery. And a patient came in with chest pain uh, and talked to the doctor. And during the whole conversation, the doctor didn't mention once heart surgery. And then, then the patient died. This would be a criminal case. The doctor would be taken to court mm -hmm. and sued, if not worse. Right. Now, if you go to a doctor because you're constipated and they give you a laxative and never mention your food, or you have MS and never mention all the research that's published on MS and diet, treatments that do no harm, improve the general body health, and uh, and work, they're never mentioned. I mean, how how many millions of doctors should be put in jail? I know, I agree. That, that's a strong statement. I, I I know that's a strong statement. But see, when you have a job and an obligation for your customer, yeah, and you do not fulfill that in any way, that's just not past a mistake. I think I may live long enough to see justice. Maybe. Well, it's all a part of the, the giant, the greater machine at work, right? I mean, the doctors are trained in medical schools where, as you said, they don't get nutrition study. Um, that's not their training. Their training is to diagnose and give a prescription or some sort of treatment that does right. not include food. That is absolutely correct. You know, I did a, a thing. I, I usually end up doing things on, on my own, and I did this one pretty much on my own, too. In uh, January of 2011, I went to uh, our legislative body in Sacramento, California, and I uh, talked to some of the uh, senators. I got uh, one of the senators interested in a bill, and that bill is called SB 380. You can look it up mm -hmm. on the internet, SB 380, California. And uh, I'm not supposed to say this, but I wrote the bill. You know, you're say, supposed to say it was written by the senator and stuff like that. Right, right. Well, I wrote the bill. And uh, then I had a, uh, a Senate select uh, committee meeting mm -hmm. in uh, about April. And I walked in there with this uh, Senate Bill 380. And uh, the first thing that came there, about 16 senators there, first thing that came out of their mouth is, you know, you're really wasting our time. We want you to know. Doctors don't need any more laws telling them what to do. Mm. I said, look, you gave me a chance to talk to you. Let me just say a few words. Right. So I talked for 45 minutes. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> and I, and I, I asked him things. I said, you know, um, do any of your friends or family have dietary diseases? And I, uh, three quarters of them are, are sitting up there close to obesity. And, of course, they said, yeah. Well, I, I said, well, how much should the doctor talk to you about the diet and how to cure it? And they all shook their heads. And I said, well, think about this. I said, uh, how many of you have pets? And they all raised their hand. I said, well, what if you went to a veterinarian and your dog or cat or bird had a dietary disease? And the doctor, the veterinarian said to you, said to you, uh, I didn't learn anything in medical school about what, my, what uh, animals eat. Mm -hmm. I said, don't you think that would require some kind of legislation to fix that problem? Oh, yeah, if you yeah. go to a doctor with a human disease and you ask them how to fix it with, with diet, they all do the same thing. They never taught me anything in medical school about nutrition, right. and, they did, and they didn't. So uh, you know, I left kind of thinking, well, that was an interesting two hours. And uh, what happened was uh, two months later, unanimously, every member of both houses passed the bill. On to the governor. Wow. Governor, governor Jerry Brown. Oh, my God. He signed it in September of 2011. The mistake was, and the, the way they finally beat me, and they haven't finally beaten me because that's on the record. It's a law in California that the 11 medical schools have to teach the students nutrition. Amazing. Okay. And they're not, and they're not doing it. And the, the 550 hospitals have to provide at least some nutritional education at their noontime lunches. Okay. The way they beat me is, is, is always behind my back. Everything would happen behind my back. Of course. And uh, what they did is they discharged the, the obligation 
to implement SB 380 to the California Medical Board. And we had a couple of meetings after that, but it was obvious that they were, they were told how this was going to turn out. So what they decided to do is they decided what they would do to, to fulfill this obligation, a law in the state of California, is to write a one paragraph, one paragraph uh, uh, about nutrition annually in a newsletter that they sent out on the internet. Oh, come on. And uh, that is the doctor's education that you now get after a few months of my work and a lot of work with the legislature and the signature, signature of Jerry Brown. They get one, one, one paragraph about <laughs> nutrition. Could be vitamins, minerals, whatever you want. Oh, my God. I'm getting angry right now. I'm so fired up. <laughs> I'm mad. But, I'm sad. <laughs> but, but you see, I did it. And soon somebody else is going to do it. Yeah. And they're going to win. Yeah. It's progress. You have to lose and lose and lose so that someday somebody can win. Yeah. And I, I, I have to take that attitude because if, it, if my continuation of what I'm doing, depending upon me winning, I'd quit. Right. You know, I, I go and I go out there to lose. <laughs> it's, it's just like with this like uh, uh, suit we have against the egg board, which will be held very shortly. Sure. Uh, they'll they'll beat me some way or another, but in PCR, they'll do it one way or another. Uh, but someday somebody's going to get them. But at least you're fighting. Dr. McDougall, why do you think that the establishment, the medical establishment, is so resistant despite the research that you came across, you know, decades ago and the continued... In the 20s. And in the, and and the, and the continued evidence that well, continues to come out. It, why? It's obvious. Money. It, yeah, it's all, it's all money. You know, you, the, the average office visit is uh, seven minutes, and that's generous. And you can write a prescription or two or three in seven minutes. Uh, if you had to sit down and talk to people about uh, diet, it could take you an hour. Yeah. If you really put them through an educational program, it could take a long time. Now, Obama, uh, Obamacare has made some provisions so that uh, this kind of uh, care for people would be financially advantageous for, to employees and to doctors and so on. So some progress is, is being made. Mm -hmm. But uh, not, not, not and it's just... There's just too much money out there uh, to to change things as fast as you and I think they should be. It, I mean, this seems like a no-brainer. You know, why would why would anybody want to support a system, a food system, and a pharmaceutical system and a device system that's proven to do far, far more harm than good to mutilate women by amputating their breasts? Mm -hmm which does no good at all. We've known that since the 19, 1939 uh, by uh, making men impotent and incontinent with prostate surgeries. We've known that and agreed upon it for over 15 years. You know, the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force says PSA tests should not be done. You know, we've known that heart surgery doesn't save lives. We've, we've known that for 25 years. And the, the heart surgery business continues and accelerates every year. And I have three friends, people in my life, two who have had mastectomies and one who is getting one. And they think that is the only way. And it makes me sick to my stomach. Well, they don't read the newspaper, which comes out with articles. There's been a couple, the, not, not this year, mm -hmm. but in the, in the last six months, that have clearly shown that mastectomies don't save lives. I mean, it's just in the newspaper. It, it stays in the newspaper for Sometimes a couple of the days, and then they go to their doctor, and the doctor says, oh, well, that's nonsense. Right. I mean, how could you not save lives by cutting a woman's breast off? Well, let's you know. talk about how you are saving lives with your McDougal program, because I think if I was listening right now, I would be like, well, what do I do? And you have a program that heals people, and they can go to your program and do this. So I would love to hear about that. All right. Uh, we'll do it because uh, because uh, we'll do it for just a couple of minutes because I know you guys are getting tired of all this stuff. No, we want to have we want to right. we want to record love all, all this, night. We love all, all right, this well, stuff. We, we 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 can do it again in a, in a little while, a little bit. Sounds great. especially uh, when we get I, political, I, have, I get fired I, I up. I have a website. It's called drmcdougall.com. Almost everything is free on it. I mean, really, everything is free on it. You can't go to Hawaii with it's free. Right. We have to charge you. You can't go to my 10-day program for free. 
but we have you know, over 500 recipes there that are free. Uh, all the stuff that I've talked about in articles about uh, diabetes, prostate, etc. that's all free. So you can go there and uh, learn some things. But I think that the best thing to, to learn from is something called Dr. McDougall's Color Picture Book on Food Poisoning and How to Cure it with Beans, Corn, Rice, Potatoes. It's a, it's a color picture book, just like a children's book, except it's written for adults mm -hmm. and it's like 66 pages long. You go, you take, you know, eight minutes to go through that, you'll understand everything. It'll be absolutely clear. I think fact, I need to uh, get my husband that book and a packet of crayons. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not, it's not a book. It's on the website and it's oh. in, it's in 24 languages. Wow. That's amazing. So you, so you can, you know, have your friends in China read it. Uh, so uh, I'd go to the website and just spend some time fooling around there. There are probably 150 star McDougalers there. Mm -hmm. uh, the recipes are there. The meal plans are there. The article, the art, I gave you the article on MS July 2014. You can find the two articles I wrote about SB 380 mm -hmm. and how we tried to win and lost. And, uh, you know, there, there are articles on pretty much everything. Everything I do as a doctor, uh, treating high blood pressure, treating diabetes, treating obesity, uh, you know, a, a lot of the things that I believe in terms of the, the environment. Uh, 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 yeah, it, it, you'll be amazed. People come away from that website and they write me quite, quite often. Yeah. And they say, where's the gimmick? Where, where's the gimmick? I mean, everything here is free. Yeah, what are you selling here? <laughs> what sell, well, so what we're selling is uh, uh, self gratification. I mean, for Mary and I, yeah, uh, we we uh, had the great fortune thirty eight years ago, maybe it was forty, mm -hmm. to learn this kind of diet. Mary and I, I was really sick. Mary was in pretty good shape, mm -hmm. but I was sick and dying back then. So we got saved, and uh, we felt it was our obligation to help other people. And plus, back in those days, you couldn't sell it; nobody would buy it. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, uh, Anyway, we just got in the habit, which is something uh, many other people have learned, is that when you give, you get. And so the more you give, the more you get. And it's been that way for us. And we have people, we have people who uh, come on our adventure trips. We, we make money that way. We'll have sometimes 140 people that come with us. I want to come. <laughs> well, we, have a, we have a weekend this weekend. It, we'll have, we have 350 people come. It, uh, T. Colin Campbell will be there, or Michael Greger. Yes, Dr. Esselstyn will be there. Well, a lot of very interesting, famous people. Yes. We have Dean Ornish there at times and all kinds of interesting people. So we put on these programs that do cost and, you know, keep, keep the shoes on the grandchildren. <laughs> but otherwise, I, I promise you, everything you need is on that website. Extremely well organized. It's drmcdougall.com. And... Uh, that's what I'd ask you to do. Go there and then find one, one, two, three recipes you like and make them over and over again. Like Mary and I, we have uh, beans and rice maybe three times a week for dinner. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you were going to say Dr. McDougall's Right Foods. We don't own that company anymore, but it's okay. in 6,000 6, stores. And is that kind of the staples from the diet that you prescribe to your patients oh, or what is that? No, it, it, it's, it's, it's really good food. It's not perfect food. It's right food. Mm -hmm. Very, very tasty tortilla soup and pea soup and all kinds of Asian dishes. The common denominator that has best, the best quality ingredients you can do with that kind of food. Mm -hmm. Plus, there's absolutely no oil or no, no animals. Wonderful. And they're really, really popular because they taste so good. So is your diet primarily vegetarian, no oil? What, what is the primary right. ingredient? The, the most important you, thing you need to think about is starch. Okay. You know, if you don't get your mind opened to the fact that you are a starch eater, a starchivore, mm -hmm. a starchitarian, that you decide that what you love to eat is what you're supposed to eat, then you're not going to make it. It's the absolute key ingredient is to make starch 90% of your diet, maybe 80%. Well, going back to the rice earlier, I love rice. I could eat rice every day and I could live on it. But I worry that our modern day rice is bleached and packaged and, you know, it's not it's not real rice. 
How do oh, we get that authentic it's food? A, it's a lot better than a pork chop. Yeah. Oh, I don't eat meat. Don't worry. You got me. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, see, it, it, you, you can make things better. You can go to natural food stores. And so I can I can gorge on stores. my organic rice. I'm in. If, 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 you, if you eat rice or corn, mm -hmm. uh, you can join the, uh, the, the uh, most excellent athletes in the world if you make 80% of your diet starch. Like, for example, all, uh, all of the top winning places in all of the uh, marathon and triathlon races, long distance races, mm -hmm. since uh, 1968 have been dominated by the Kenyans, who 80% of their diet is corn and, 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 mm -hmm. and other starches. But what about our modern corn i've heard a lot that it's all gmo and that it's stripped of US. nutritional value in the us and then it's stripped of nutritional value um any thoughts on that yeah it could be better <laughs> yes. but okay. it's a lot it's a lot better than a you know a chicken wing oh yeah 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 so you, it, when you have choices you can make you can make stricter choices if you want you can get no gmo corn or or uh, you know you can grow it in your backyard, good soil. I mean, you, yeah. there are all kinds of options there. It's just the, the most convenient and inexpensive way to get it is with some shortcomings. I hear you. But the shortcomings are not that serious that it'll affect people in major ways. Got it. Okay, tell us about the McDougal MD TV show. So I, I don't do the TV show anymore, but I do an awful lot of uh, Internet stuff. Uh, I have uh, my own webinar every Thursday at 11 a.m. in the morning. Love it. Okay, so that's Pacific time. So Eastern time, it's... Right, but no. you can watch it anytime you want. Oh, you, you can do. watch it later. You can oh, watch the replay. Watch cool. Yeah, and you just have to sign up. There's, again, no gimmicks. You just sign up and we send you a, a link and you can watch it live and ask questions, ask me questions. And Love that. So we do that. I, I put out a monthly newsletter, which is always a labor of love. I've got another book coming out in, in uh, the fall. Awesome. What's your book called? It's called The Healthiest Diet on the Planet, and it's by a, a company called Harper. Well, I'm sure you've heard yes, of it. Yes. Yeah. Oh, a little <laughs> publishing company, yeah. <laughs> so it's a, it's a big deal. Uh, they plan on it being a big national bestseller, just like the Starch Solution. I will buy it the day it comes out. Or you can send us advanced copies, and we'll review it on yeah. the show. There you go. That would be nice. <laughs> Absolutely. We'd be happy to. But anyway, it, it should be a good book. And it will also have Dr. McDougall's Colored Picture Book on food poisoning. Cool. To, cool. Which you really, every, everybody that's listening to this show, if you just write that down and go to the website and spend eight minutes looking at the Colored Picture Book, you'll be entertained as well as your mind will be completely clear about what the truth is. And your eyes will be forever opened. I mean, it's, 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 it's a result of 40 years of my work, of my thinking, and I learned how to simplify uh, things so that you don't have to believe me. Uh, just once you see the pictures, you go, oh, yeah, that's true. I know that. <laughs> and it's a real easy way to learn the diet. Take it eight minutes to learn the diet. Free. I love that so much. So Food Heals Nation, go to drmcdougall.com. Find the color picture book. Take eight minutes out of your life to learn his life's work and what you can do to make yourself healthier starting today. Dr. McDougall, is there anywhere else people can find you online? Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn? Oh, yeah. We have a Facebook that has more than 100,000 followers. Yes, I'm one of them. <laughs> okay. And we also, uh, I, you know, the thing is, is I, I have a, a really great staff that takes care of all the things that I would once have taken care of myself. Sure. But now I you're busy with those grandkids. <laughs> yeah, busy with the grandkids. And, uh, you know, I, I, I get to walk up on stage and be talent. Love it. And, uh, yeah, it's good. So uh, a lot of the things, just like all the Internet stuff that's done, was done by our, uh, well, was done mainly by my daughter. She runs the entire operation now. Great. But, but it's uh, done by a lot of fantastic people. And so you'll find the quality of the, of the uh, material related to us is very high. Absolutely. It is. I can speak to that because I do follow you on multiple platforms. All right. <laughs> and you are on YouTube. You are on Facebook. You are on LinkedIn. And you are also, are you on Twitter? Yes. John McDougall. You know, no, 
I, I am on Twitter, but I don't know how to work Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, that's the thing is Mary and I have been sitting, everybody's talking about tweeting and we've been thinking, you know, we got to learn how to use Twitter. But we're of an age where uh, it's, you just don't learn new things I like you did when you were younger. All right. Do you have a last tweetable or just a quote that means a lot to you to leave for us? Well, I, you know, I hope all of us working together. Back when I started doing this, there were very few people who even knew what the word vegan was. But the world's changing. We are winning. Now, there's no doubt we're winning. It's just we're not winning fast enough. And so I would, uh, you know, any of you who buy into what we're talking about and think it's worthwhile, I, I'd just change this to a major part of your life and your and your life goal to make the world a, a livable place. And... Uh, and I'll put every effort you can into it. Mary and I, we do 14-hour days. Wow. Uh, anytime you have some time to do this and carry the message on, uh, I do it in whatever manner you have. Uh, some of our staff, they convey the message by saying, it works for me. And all my staff looks mm -hmm. great. <laughs> me, I get in their face. Mm -hmm. And I don't care if I offend them or not. And Good for you. It works for me. <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> I, whatever your talents are. A, a good speaker, a good listener, uh, you know, a good demonstration, a welcoming person, whatever you could do to get this message across. It's so crucial. It is really, it is the future. If we don't get this fixed, there is no future. Well, Susie and I couldn't agree more. Thank you, Dr. McDougall. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you so Please much. Keep me in mind. We'll do it again sometime whenever you like, okay? We would love to. We love everything you're doing in the world, and we just really appreciate you know, you as a force in this industry. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I enjoy it. And I enjoyed talking to you both. It was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, women have experienced a strong desire to change their status update from hashtag blessed to hashtag OMG even more blessed than yesterday, hashtag loving life. If you experience any of these symptoms, make sure to tweet a Kardashian immediately.